This is the Carolina Classic Fair Friday Night Rivals Game of the Week presented by West Shore Home. Tonight we head to the suburbs of Winston-Salem in Pofftown, North Carolina, where one of the best teams in the state, the Grimsley Whirlies, hit the road off a 2-0 start. They face one of the best environments in North Carolina. Here the Reagan Raiders look to pull the upset and defend home turf in Winston-Salem. We welcome you to Pofftown, North Carolina with the former Catawba offensive lineman Mark Covert. I'm Evan Budjervich. Talent aplenty tonight. Grimsley features two wide receivers committed to NC State and UNC. Reagan's defense led by a Duke commit in the secondary. So Mark, how do these future ACC standouts make an impact tonight? Well, it's got to be early and often. You talk about a good matchup between wide receiver and defensive back. That's where it's going to be won here. Outside the trenches, those guys one-on-one -on -one have to make plays for their respective teams to have a chance here tonight. Grimsley, a reigning state finalist. Reagan, a reigning playoff team. But it's always been close when Reagan and Grimsley meet up, and Dave Gorin explains more. That's right, Evan. These two coaches and teams know each other well. They've played the last couple years, two close games. And before they played each other, they used to scrimmage each other. So Daryl Brown at Grimsley and Josh McGee here at Reagan, they know each other well. They like each other. They respect each other. The question now, who will execute better tonight? We're going to find out starting in just a few minutes. Right now, let's go back up to the booth at Evan and Mark. Guys. Thanks, Dave. Grimsley has not lost a road game in four years. Reagan calls these hallow grounds the graveyard. We'll figure out who's coming out on top tonight. We have plenty more from Poptown, North Carolina for our Carolina Classic Fair. Friday Night Rivals Game of the Week presented by West Shore Homes when we return. Welcome back to Pop Town, gearing up for a big 4A state matchup here in North Carolina. This Grimsley Whirlies offense, 45 points a game. That is for certain. Defensively, what are the keys? How do they slow down Reagan's passing attack? Well, it's about applying pressure. Jacob Smith being back there as quarterback of Reagan. You got to get pressure on him and make him uneasy in the pocket. And then just finding consistency offensively. This offense can do so much already, and you can unlock it to another level as long as they find some consistency at the quarterback spot. As far as Reagan's concerned, it's about ambushing Grimsley early on, getting out ahead. You have this home field advantage. Take full advantage of this crowd that's here tonight for your home opener and really dial in with that electricity and that energy they're going to bring to your sideline tonight. Grimsley is 2-0 with one of the best rushing attacks in the country. And Mark, it all starts with Mitchell Summers on the ground, the junior tailback, close to... A thousand yards last year as a sophomore. How does he carry that forward in year three? He's just so electric. And you see the development from last year to this season so far to the tune of almost 300 yards rushing. He's the dynamo for that offense right now and the bell cow for it. 
And looking at, at what Reagan does, really you flip to the other side. Landon Callahan's the guy. The Duke commit is the guy in the defensive backfield that makes everything go, that gets everyone lined up defensively, and is a true leader for this defense on game day and throughout the week. Reagan's defense, 14 interceptions last year. Callahan led that charge. And as Dave noted, when these teams met last season, a one-score game. So we'll see what's cooking here. Grimsley at 2-0. Reagan at 0-2, about 20 miles separate these Greensboro and Triad rivals here in Pofftown, just outside of Winston-Salem. Reagan gets the football first. There's Jalen Moore, the sophomore tailback, back to receive. And Luke Barnes, the senior kicker with the pink sneakers, gets us underway. Returnable for Callahan. Broken tackle. Callahan shoots out past the 30. Immediate impact for Landon Callahan. It's got to feel good. Right off the bat, you get your star player in a position to make a play with the football in his hands. And he does just that with a solid kick return, giving this offense great field position to start. Here's the sophomore quarterback, Jacob Smith. He's committed to NC State as a quarterback and as a pitcher on the baseball team. And here's the entire Cook Reynolds starting attack. How important is this running back, Jalen Moore, behind him? Oh, he, he's got to be it, it, there to take the pressure off of Jacob Smith tonight and really produce. And it also accounts for those five guys up front along the offensive line. First and 10, the quarterback scrambles. Finds his target. That's a catch. William Tapp, the junior receiver, with his first reception. What a catch by Tapp. Out to the far sideline, extending to go get that football. Smith lets this one sail just a little bit, but Tapp bails him out. An excellent catch. The toe tap, if you will. And Reagan struggled to score last week. Just 13 points. They went for two in the final minutes on the road in Charlotte and lost that game 14 to 13. You know, just part of a stiff early season schedule, a non-conference schedule that is not forgiving in the least bit. And they've got a tall task ahead of them here tonight against Grimsley as well. That was at Mooresville High School, a two and a half hour drive. Now a fresh set of downs for Smith. We did have a holding, so that gets pushed back a first and long. The NC State committed quarterback on first down. Feeds Moore, the sophomore tailback. Jalen Moore breaks it open, and he gets into Grimsley territory. How about that run? Straight up the gut, good separation by the offensive line, able to create a hole for Moore, and that's all he needs, just a crease, and he can do the rest once he gets to the second level. As Brittany Spears would say, give me, give me more. That was 25 on first down. First and 10, back to Moore. And a nice chunky yardage. Now this Cook Reynolds starting defense for Grimsley. Long goes Jamal Jarrett, the Georgia commit last year as a senior, but some big targets, Andre Hill and Keenan Hatcher in the middle. Absolutely, and they're gonna be the ones to control the line of scrimmage here tonight. Just getting down, dominating a change, get pushing this offensive line of Reagan back and giving those linebackers and safeties and corners room to roam. Second and five, play action, pressure. Incomplete. That is Jamari Davis, the senior captain. How important will he be tonight? Oh, absolutely huge. You see the pressure immediately applied by him off the edge. It gets to Smith, soft setting a throw. And Smith's got an arm. This is a guy who has a can. We saw him last year on our Friday Night Rivals game when we were here in Poff Town. And he shines so much as a sophomore. You've got to get back there and get him uneasy, make that pocket collapse down on him. Jamari Davis, the three-year captain, he'll play safety. Now a third and medium. Handoff goes nowhere. Diving into the backfield is Davis again for the stop. And that's going to be the game plan tonight. Get pressure. This is what Grimsley likes to do. Get that pressure into the backfield. Stop runs for no gain or drop them for a loss and then get pressure on the passing game. After a bit of an uneasy start there, some good gains for Reagan initially. Way to stiffen up by this Grimsley defense and force a punt. There's Reagan head coach Josh McGee in his 13th year, electing to punt here at midfield. And a whistle before the snap. Our first look at the officiating crew tonight.
this is on the offense. Does it affect your decision at all? Looks like there's no penalty. I don't think so. Uh, right now, you're going against an explosive team in Grimsley. Play the field position battle. Allow your defense to go out there and see what they can do on their first possession. There's the booming punt. And a fair catch for Terrell Anderson, one of the best receivers in North Carolina. How about this duo for young sophomore quarterback Faison Brandon? He has Alex Taylor, the UNC commit, and to his right, Terrell Anderson, the NC State, both senior wide receivers. And you can really tell when we were down there on the field initially, Evan, the two of them have the Division I size. I mean, they've got guys out there who can go up and pinpoint the ball, high point it in the air, come down with it, but they can also make those catches in traffic. Whatever you need them to do, they can do it, as well as blocking the run game. That was the Cook Reynolds starting attack. Anderson on the end round. Gets outside. Anderson gets seven on first down. And the way this offense operates, Daryl Brown gets everyone involved. Absolutely, and you can see right there. Look, just because you're a wide receiver doesn't mean you can't tote the rock every once in a while. You see it there, Anderson just on the end round sweep. Gets up good yardage on first down, sets up a second and medium and very manageable. And Grimsley's offense explosive. 50 points in the first half last week against Roseville, blowing out the Raleigh team. Now a second down carry. Mitchell Summers breaks one open. And brought down in the secondary. That's Carter Powell, the senior linebacker. Summers, a guy, our, our guy to watch on this Grimsley team in the pregame ceremony. And you talk about two Division I receivers on this offense, and he might be the star, Summers. See right there, the power, smaller build, but a lot of power packed into it, as well as speed, as I'm sure we'll see as the night goes on. First and 10. Faison scrambles. Finds his target. That's Alex Taylor. First catch for the UNC Pro. And you can see right now the distribution of where the ball goes. Like you said, Evan, they want to spread it around. They're going to do that. Three plays, three different players have caught or touched the football outside of their quarterback. This is the Cook Reynolds starting defense. We told you about Callahan. Steven Scales, a big target in that DB position as well. Absolutely. He's another guy in the secondary that can really roam. You talk about landing Callahan on the outside, but those safeties are going to be just as important here tonight. Starting linebacker Leo Housel Rechaichich is the sophomore starter on the JV team last year. A young defense on second and four. Summers bounces outside, gets down the sideline. Summers back in play. Breaks a tackle. Summers, touchdown! How did he pull that one off? You talk about the tools that you want as a running back. All of them were on display on that run from Mitchell Summers. You saw the vision to stop and bounce the football outside to the right side, make his way, have balance along the Grimsley sideline, and then the vision. Cut back inside, make a couple guys miss. And from there, he had a caravan in front of him to escort him into the end zone. That's a bang hard apparel touchdown. Go with the bang hard apparel. Local athletic brand offering performance fabric. And man, Mitchell Summers put his team on his back on that carry. 60 yards in one play. And the extra point completes it. One of the best teams in North Carolina, off and running. Mitchell Summers back on the ground. His 50th touchdown carries the load for Grimsley. Captioning for tonight's game is brought to you by Caring Hands. At Caring Hands Home Health, 
We understand that the happiness of your loved ones is important to their overall wellness. And in the hands of Mitchell Summers, this offense is rolling for a 60-yard touchdown. I mean, you can't ask for a better start for what Grimsley had here. A little shaky on defense. They settle down, get the football back, and then march right down the football field to the tune of a 60-yard tote for Mitchell Summers. Absolutely electric. And that's something we were kind of excited to see here tonight, too. You talk about a 5-6 running back. Not a lot of size, but you see what he brings to this offense. It is absolutely electrifying to watch. Reagan with its second possession. Here's Callahan. Gets out of a tackle. Callahan earning 25 hard yards. So Reagan settled for a punt on its last drive. How do the Raiders punch it in this time? But don't commit mental mistakes. If you saw the first play from scrimmage, they throw a pass out to the right side, get a completion that would have moved the sticks, but there's a penalty there. And even from there, you're still operating from behind the chains. Don't do that to yourself. And you can't on a, on a night where you're facing arguably the best team in North Carolina in the Grimsley Worlds. Here's young Jacob Smith who earned the starting job in week four last year as a freshman. Now he can drive as a sophomore. On first and ten. Feeds Moore. Spins away. Jalen Moore with a hard earned eight yards. I'll tell you what, this might be a battle running backs here tonight, Evan. I mean, in all honesty, Moore has done a really good job of just reading what the defense is doing. You see him just stop here for a second and then burst up field once he finds that hole. An excellent job by Moore to get up field and get yards. Second and short. Smith throws it. There's a catch, tap, tap with space into Grimsley territory. Two big completions for William Tapp. I tell you, he was wide open on the far side working that Reagan sideline. There was not a whirly within 15 yards of him when he caught that football. Excellent play call that time, great execution. Read the defense, take the easy yards to move the sticks. That's a Crescent Ford first down. Both completions to tap, both first downs. Fresh set of downs, back to Moore. Gets outside, Moore bangs into a defender. And the sophomore tailback playing with some energy tonight. He's fired up, and you can see that in the energy. Every single time he catches or runs that football, he's coming back out to the huddle with, with some fire in him. And I like to see that. You need, you need a guy in this game here that's going to really supply that energy. If it's not going to be Jacob Smith, why not Jalen Moore in the backfield alongside him? Jalen Moore rushed for 300 yards last year when these teams met. Now second and short. Moore again. He is just short. Nice tackle there from Taquarius Hayes, the outside linebacker. I think this is a down and distance where you've got to challenge your offensive line here. A big game in the third week of the high school football season here in North Carolina. You want these guys to shore up, man up, and take control of that offensive that line of scrimmage up front. This is a third and short. Run this football, dominate up front, see what you guys can do. Third down. Moore sneaks forward, dives, and is short. The defensive line for Grimsley, fantastic on that play. It's more push. Who wants it more in that situation? Third and long, you got to get there. And that's that's big Keenan did. Hatcher, 6'6", 320. Setting up fourth and short. Try it again. Moore has the first down. How about the effort of the 100-pound lighter Jalen Moore taking Hatcher for the extra yard? Just really getting up there, sticking your nose in there, and just driving those legs. But also give the right side of the offensive line a lot of credit, getting enough room for Moore to work with and move the chains. Because Keenan Hatcher's 355. Jalen Moore just got pancaked. He's 165, soaking wet. But he is, again, we talked about on the other side, when you talk about Mitchell Summers, how powerful he is for his size. Jalen Moore is no different. Certainly one of those games where you can look at the stats and the measurements and everything you want. It's not going to equate to what you see on the field. This is an official review. First down or fourth down? First down. At Crescent Ford, first down. 
their short yardage situations. Again, you want to see your offensive line take over, move the line of scrimmage back towards the defense. And that time, Jalen Moore looks like a slice of bread at yeah. the hometown buffet. He, he does. just got eaten up. <laughs> And Josh McGee said our three sophomore offensive linemen will have to win matchups this week. And that's what you want to see. You got to challenge them. They challenged them here in the first two weeks. Week three, they start should be starting to come into their own. Fresh set of downs. Play action. Smith throws. Completion. Aaron Gutierrez with a first down. The junior halfback with his first catch. Beautiful play. And that's how you read the tempo of the game right now. You run, run, run. And as soon as the defense starts creeping up to the line of scrimmage, pull that football out and start putting in the air. Keep them honest. Excellent play call and another easy pitch and catch for Smith. Ride to the game in style with the new F-150 from Crescent Ford of High Point. On first down, Moore in the middle of bodies. And he gets eaten up. How about the play options here of Reagan offensively? I like the way they're mixing it up, but sticking to what they want to do. Running the football has got to be where they do a lot of work here. And they've done a really good job with that so far. Jacob Smith, more interceptions than touchdowns this year, leading a nice drive, and gets five extra yards. You know that's going to get that Grinsley sideline. Stay disciplined, hold your water. I know you want to fire off the football and stop this running game, but you got to do it on fair ground. And that's the captain of the defensive line, junior Andre Hill, who now exits. See a little gas there, too. That's what that running game does. This offensive line doing a good job of wearing off and wearing down a very formidable defensive front for Grimsley. And that's head coach Daryl Brown. Grimsley has not lost a road game in four years. Battle-tested program. Now on second and three, it's Moore. He has Moore, trucking a man. Look at Moore go with a flag late, and that might be on Grimsley. I'll tell you what, I really like the physicality I'm seeing out of Reagan right now. You know who the opponent is. They've read about it, they've heard about it all week long. Coach McGee told us, right? That's a defensive face mask, so now it's first and goal. The Coach McGee told us coming into this one, everyone expects us to lose. There's 70 people who think they're going to win this game, and it's the coaches, trainers, and players on this team. And right now, they're fighting. I mean, they are absolutely fighting like they are going toe-to-toe -to -toe with this Grimsley ball club. Last two years, one score games, Reagan versus Grimsley. Now a first and goal. Here's Moore. Nowhere to go, and Moore goes down. Great pressure from Deron Anderson and Dion McLaughlin. Just a great pressure that time by Grimsley. Able to bring extra bodies, more than this offense can block. Just getting through and finding penetration. Moore had nowhere to go from the start of that play. Excellent job by the Whirlies. Grimsley's defense only allows 13 points a game. Very stingy under Joe Rigsby, the D coordinator. And when you've got a defensive front like they do, you expect as much. Apply that pressure, take some of the pressure off your defensive backs. Just get back there, disrupt an offense. Now, second in goal. Here's tap in motion on second down. Play action. Runner tackled. What a stop. That's Jakari Eason from the backside of the play. Sure is. And man, that may have been a missed opportunity by Jacob Smith. Tap was running the whole way across the formation from left to right and had him there. If Smith is able to just get his eyes upfield and come back a little bit, Tap is running wide open across the formation. 42 tackles as a junior. Now Jakai Eason, the senior captain on defense, setting up a third and goal. Well, you need your quarterback to make the play here. Now on third and goal. Keeper. Tough decision. Grimsley sniffs it out. Is this four down territory for Reagan? I think so. I think realistically in a game like this where you know you've got to put touchdowns and not field goals on the board to keep up the scoring pace of this Grimsley squad, Reagan, when they get their opportunities, when they're in the red zone, they've got to convert those chances. And how about this? A field goal opportunity for Ryder Lawson, who has offers from UNC and Maryland and South Carolina. Excellent kicker. 
now salvaging three points on this 26 yard attempt. Good hold by the quarterback. Better kick. And Reagan's on the board. Expect plenty of points tonight. Grimsley holds defensively. And we got a fun one here in Pottstown, North Carolina. Unique traditions in Pop Town, North Carolina. Welcome to the Hill as the Reagan Raiders come down to the graveyard. It's very Clemson esque, is it not? How would that fire you up as a 14, 18 year old playing in your home open? Absolutely. And I'll tell you what, it may have done a, a good job of lighting a fire underneath this Reagan football team. A hill that was designed and every tree cut and planted by the head coach Josh McGee with his father 13 years ago. How about that? Building a program from the ground up. Yeah, literally. Watching it grow over time. Reagan has won nine or more games. And in high school, you only play 11 or 12 in the regular season. Four straight years. Grimsley has lost one regular season game in four years. Two elite programs. As Lawson sends it away. Returnable. Here's Terrell Anderson. And he's dropped inside the 25. Last drive, it was Mitchell Summers. What an electric run for Grimsley. Oh, absolutely. And just another one of the weapons that they display at full force on this offense. Summers is going to be the guy that's going to make everything go tonight. But don't be mistaken, we're also going to be watching for the development on quarterback phase on Summers. One of those guys that you really expect as the year goes on to get more and more comfortable in this offense and see more things. And as the game slows down, we expect a lot out of this young man. Daryl Brown describes his offense as blue collar. Yeah. We saw that on drive one. Now a first and ten for Brown. He throws. That is incomplete. A forward pass intended for Kyan Battle, the senior. That was the first time Reagan had pressure in his face. Yeah, absolutely. Just, again, feeling out your opponent. This is what you do in almost every game, right? You feel out first couple plays, see how, how everything's going, mentality, play call, formations. And then you start to dial it up once you think you have an idea of what's going on. Reagan testing the waters and found something that worked that time. Now second and ten. Reagan does not move. Three new starters on this Reagan defensive line. Led by K.J. Woody in the middle. Woody brings pressure. There's a catch. There's Anderson. And he is just short of the sticks. What an electric receiver, the 6-2 senior. And again, he just passes that eye test, doesn't he? Just see him down the field. Big, tall, strong receiver. Right there, great job blocking downfield by his fellow receivers, a couple offensive linemen. Gained some positive yardage, but I'll tell you what, these receivers are going to be something to watch as the year goes on as well. Anderson and Taylor. First third down for Grimsley tonight. Third and three. Quarterback keeper. Convoy of blockers and a first down. What a smart play design by head coach Daryl Brown. And it really felt like Reagan had that sniffed out to a certain extent. Just couldn't get there in time. And like Lincoln Jackson came off the edge and tried to make that stop. You see right there, but by that time, Faison Brandon was too far upfield. And those pulling the guards are a defender's worst nightmare. Yeah, exactly. Mark, you played offensive line in college. How fun is that play pulling around the corner? When you see a, a linebacker, but especially a defensive back there, and you're in open space, and you know it's one-on-one, -on -one, you're looking at Charles. Now on first down, quarterback runs it, dumps it off. No game. What a gang tackle. 
This Reagan defense came to play as well. You're seeing them starting to pick up on some of the things that the Scrimsley offense is doing. Some of those checkdowns, they're going to start pressuring them like this. Grimsley's going to have to start taking shots. That was David Wooer, the captain on the tackle. A literal shoestring stop. Whatever it takes, just get the ball carrier to the ground. That's on no easy mission either, with Mitchell Summers being the reception receptor on that one. Second and 12. Plenty of time. And a catch. Wide open down the middle. Still moving. Chunk yardage for Jeremiah Deese, the backup tight end. Excellent play call. Found himself naked straight down the seam right here. An easy pitch and catch that time for Faison Brandon. And Deese was just off to the races from there. What a play call. That's 43 yards on the Crescent Ford first down. And that should end our first quarter. What a quarter it's been. Seen some fight out of both sides. Reagan is not going to go down without a fight in this one. That is for sure. You talk about Mitchell Summers and Alex Taylor and Terrell Anderson. Don't sleep on the weapons here at Grimsley because here comes Jeremiah Deese. Broken the gates open. Can Grimsley convert? We'll find out after this break. We're back with tonight's winning row. So everyone in that winning row will receive free tickets to the Carolina Classic Fair, September 29th, October 8th, in about a month. The Carolina Classic Fair, there's magic in the fair. And now on first down, Grimsley goes back to work. That's Mitchell Summers. Nice chunk of yardage. It is hula night here with the tiki's and the shirts. Good home atmosphere, and Grimsley looks to quiet that on the ground. Uh, and we kind of suspected coming in here with Reagan, you know the crowd was going to be pumped up. Home opener, you know, an opponent that is second to almost none within the state, so you want to have a lot of energy that way. But uh, Grimsley's done an excellent job driving down the field here on their first and second drives. We had a false start. We missed that during the play, but a late flag comes in. Daryl Brown noted after the Rollsville win, some mental mistakes allowed them to fall behind in the first half. We're seeing glimpses of that tonight. And we saw it within the first two weeks, Grimsley was not the, the team that started quickly. So this has been a real role reversal for them so far and exactly what Coach Brown wanted to see. Here's a first and 15 for Faison Brandon. Play action, slant route. Oh, it's dropped. Terrell Anderson lost a touchdown. You are not going to see that very often. Wide open, great route run. 
on the slant, got leverage underneath of the corner, and he was wide open, would have walked in potentially for a touchdown, and just drops it. You see it right there, just took his eyes off the football, maybe for half a second. But it certainly would have been hard to stop Terrell Anderson from getting into the end zone from that distance at that speed. 14 career touchdowns, almost had his 15th. Now on second and long, it's Summers. Not much room there. Steven Glover, who is a true freshman, made the tackle. It's third down. You wonder if now the, the strategy for Reagan has changed a little bit. Force Faison Brown to actually go out and win this football game with his arm. Stop Summers. Clog the middle of the line, dominate up front, and allow their secondary to take control of those one-on-one -on -one matchups. Where again, they've got Landon Callahan, the Duke commit out there on one of those receivers. Now a third and 14 with a timeout. Called by Grimsley to talk this over. This was the strength of Reagan's defense in the second year. Grimsley strains at wide receiver. What have you thought of the matchup tonight? It's been it's been pretty well matched, honestly. You, you talk about what we've seen so far passing wise outside of the one deep pass to Deese. That's been the only blemish on this Reagan defense so far. We'll take a quick timeout. Come back for this third down we return here in the second quarter. The Grimsley Whirlies out of Greensboro, number two ranked team in the state right now behind Providence Day down in Charlotte. This is an elite football team now facing a third and 14. Well, if there's any team that can really do it, this would be the one within the state. Two premier wide receivers on the outside. Quarterback in development. And now Faison heads to his head coach to ask something. Talking to our lead official. What's going on here from an offensive standpoint? Well, I'm not 100% sure, to be honest with you. Taking this much time in between plays. I don't know if it's an equipment issue. We or have a mouth like guard malfunction. So there you go. The man needs a mouth guard. Keep the pearly whites set in place. And for one play, oh, wow. the quarterback has to come out. This might be a timeout situation now for Grimsley. Uh, yeah, and it looks like that's exactly what's going on. What an interesting. So if the mouthpiece, they treated almost the like a helmet. I the helmet was a part of that. Yeah. I didn't realize the mouth guard was an element. Okay. So it's any equipment at all. Remember, Faison Brandon, he was the backup quarterback last year behind Ryan Stevens, who now plays at East Carolina. And Faison had to come in and start this game against Reagan and won it with a second-half comeback. So he certainly has the experience under his belt. Now it's just about allowing things to process properly. Coach Brown told us this week he wants to see him develop more. And you can see for the first two weeks, game has started to slow down, started to come back to him a little bit more. Instead of reacting purely on his instincts, it's been about reading what the defense is giving him and then making the appropriate play because of it. Daryl Brown, very frustrated. He now has to bring in the backup quarterback for this drive. This is Jacquez Crawford, the sophomore. Crawford ran the ball twice last week, but did not throw the football. He might have to here on third and long. I would expect something, maybe like a fade ball to the outside here. 
throw it up and let one of those talented receivers go make a play. Backup quarterback on third and long. Feeds Summers. Summers breaks it. Cuts back. And is just short of the end zone. What a run. Needed 14. He gets 20. Or we'll just run it on third and long and see what happens, right? No better option, really, with Mitchell Summers in your backfield. Excellent job by the offensive line to create just enough of a hole. And from there, it was all 22 and white, just making plays, breaking tackles, and using that strength to get near the goal line. What a weapon. The junior tailback, Mitchell Summers, on the Crescent Ford first down. Now, Faison Brandon returns at quarterback. First and goal. Movement from that left guard. A little anxious, anxious over there. Yeah, trying to pull. Got a little excited to come around the side, says it's my bad. That's a third year starter in Jamarius Mateer, the, the senior right guard. He knows it. Just a little too antsy. And what I was going to say is that maybe a back breaking play on that last play and run for Reagan. Put him in a third and long situation, backup quarterbacks in, just make a stop, force him into a situation where they may just kick a field goal. Grimsley's now three for three on third downs today. Yeah. Here's a first and goal. Summers. Nice blocking. It'll be three yards short. Summers last season, 10 games with 100 or more yards. He's been a bell cow tonight. 5-6 is all he's listed at. Maybe that's being a little bit generous, the way he's so low to the ground. But he runs with so much toughness. Strength on full display there. Just got to go a couple more yards. Now Punch second in. and goal. Here's Summers. Moving his feet. And he's stonewalled. What a stop by Reagan. Leo Hauschel-Reichic, the sophomore linebacker there. And I'll tell you what, Leo stepped up that time, made an excellent play. Look at him just hanging on there, not giving up on that play, not allowing Summers to detach and get into the end zone potentially. Excellent play from the middle linebacker. Then Nazir Blackman came in for the help on the backside. Third and goal. Quarterback keeper, quarterback touchdown. Faison Brandon taking over for the one yard scamper. Just like that, we see the other ability, not just the arm that Faison Brandon possesses and his natural ability to throw the football, but as a runner, he's just as dangerous. Good read that time. Everyone crashes down on Mitchell Summers. And it was an easy score on the left side of that offensive line for Faison Brandon. You get heavy doses of Mitchell Summers, four straight carries, and that time the keeper really caught him. Makes this offense so difficult when you have not just one, but two major rushing th threats in the backfield. Oh, high snap. This is a free play. Going for two. That's a catch. Whoa, Jamari Davis caught it. And the pass from Caden Cato. That'll count. What? Drew, that went up like a buffet order. It came with all different <laughs> sides and options. And I think they're discussing as to where that ball was thrown at on the field. Line of scrimmage, correct? Correct. And it kind of looked a little. It'll stand. Me, oh my. So when you have a quarterback that can run for a touchdown, then you let the special teams take over and throw a two-point conversion. How about Grimsley? Trickeration for the 12-point lead.
tattoo point conversion was brought to you by Lewis Family Counseling. If you're looking for extra support and guidance through a challenging situation, or you're just ready to move in a new direction in your life, we look forward to working with you to achieve your goals. Close captioning for tonight's game is brought to you by Caring Hands. At Caring Hands Home Health, we do the best to make your loved ones feel like they're being taken care of by our family. How about that drive for Grimsley? 11 plays, 76 yards, and now Reagan's up against it in its home open. Talked about half the ambushing this Grimsley team early, Reagan did. And right now it has just not gone their way. A couple of miscues on their end and just an inability to stop this Grimsley offense right now. Two drives, two touchdowns, and they are firing on all cylinders as the Whirlies have taken a commanding lead here early in the second quarter. The last three years, Grimsley is 38 and two. They do not lose many football games up in Greensboro. And this kick will go into the end zone, so a touchback, no return there for Landon Callahan. Two quality drives for Reagan, but only three points. How important is this stretch for sophomore quarterback Jacob Smith? Well, it's huge for his development, not just for him, but for this entire team. When we're talking to Coach McGee this week. One of the things he talked about is how young they are, and it's something that really limits what they try to do. When you're talking about all the installs and everything you do during the offseason, they really had to go back to fundamentals with this team. Just get back to a point like, hey, how do we play together? How do we understand the game as a team, not just individuals? So for here, it's a development process, and, and Coach McGee knew this. His coaching staff knew it going into the year. So the sophomore leads drive number three on first and ten. Quick route, nice catch, and an immediate tackle. Christian Barrett on the stop. The catch there for Jaden McCray, the junior. I just want to see how Reagan handles this, this situation. Obviously, they're getting punched in the mouth right now, right? Old coach's cliche, you get punched in the mouth, how do you respond? And you gotta wanna see them respond in a positive manner, put a good drive together. Now a second and five. Reagan, who's gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with Grimsley the last two years, had leads in the second half in both those games, but down big here. Now on second down, another out route. Ooh, missed target. Two receivers crossed up there. And you saw them both running the same route right there, both thinking they were going to be going for that little bubble screen to the outside. And again, that's where your miscommunication is with the young team. They're learning on the fly. And you're going against some of the top tier competition within the state these first three weeks before you reach a bye in week four. These mistakes are going to happen. They're going to be growing pains. That was Cassidy Harvin and William Tapp. Now on third down, Reagan just watched Grimsley go 71 yards. They need a first down here. I think this ball is going to go into the hands of Jacob Smith in this passing attack. Now third and five. It's a play action. It's a tunnel toss. And a first down. Crafty play. That's K.J. Ford moving the sticks. Just a little bit of RPO action for you there, Evan. Good read that time the whole way around by Smith at the quarterback position. Pulls the football out when there's traffic in the middle, doesn't hand it off, sees pressure coming from outside. It makes the throw to the outside, easy pitch and catch for another first down for Reagan. That's the development you want to see out of this offense, processing information and making the accurate read. Fifth completion for Smith tonight. Now he feeds Jalen Moore. Moore goes nowhere. Eason again on the stop, and these DNs are crashing in hard. Those will be the tough plays realistically for Reagan offensively tonight because this Grimsley defense is so fast, so athletic, so electric. They're going to get across the field. They're going to make plays around the edges. So you've got to win inside. Not that that's not a tall task with the interior defensive line they have. We have a timeout for Grimsley defensively. It looked like they had 12 men on the field. That's probably how Grimsley's made so many stops tonight with a tremendous talent. There's the D coordinator, Joe Rigsby, who has a turnover cape. It's called the dark side. And for these young Star Wars fans, this defense causes a ton of trouble and havoc for the opponent. Absolutely. Something like the, uh, the Empire might have done back in the day. But they are 
just as good as any defense we will see in the state of North Carolina, for sure. Fast, athletic, but also smart. It's a defense that has been around the corner. They've got a lot of experience on it, and they know what they're doing. They've seen it all. They've gone against it all and know how to process that information and stand tall when they need to. That defense with five current Division I players from last year's team, so talented. Stay tuned for the My 48 Halftime Report. We'll have this week's Scholar Athletes, interviews with the schools and the principals, some highlights, and so much more coming up at halftime here in Pofftown, North Carolina. One of the largest growing suburbs of Winston-Salem. Houses booming everywhere. Even affected my travel up across the state today. You know, I didn't really know. I thought you'd be getting out of broadcast and going into real estate. Zillow.com. Side hustle? we got a 12-point game here in the second quarter. Second and long for Jacob Smith. He throws it and misses his target. Good play design, just inactive. Th that's right. the, it's the right read. It was the right play call. It was the right read. Just alligator arm that one a little bit and just comes up short, short hops it over to his receiver that time. Jacob Smith is processing the information, getting it to where it needs to go. Just got to convert and execute when that time comes. Smith is 5 of 12 passing. He'll have to clean that up on third and long. More play action. Tip drill. How about Grimsley getting after the quarterback? And that's Tobin Dunning, the senior captain. Applying the pressure is where Grimsley's going to win against the passing game of Reagan here tonight. Bring more guys than this offensive line or any of the extra blockers can count for and hope they get there in time. But with athletic, as athletic and fast as they are, more often than not, they're going to get there to make the play. And Josh McGee is calling for his quarterback, Jacob Smith, to come join him. Big learning curve for the first-year starter at QB. And you're asking a lot. And, and Coach McGee knows that, of course, as coaching him up there. Who played at Winston-Salem State. Right. Here's the punt. And a nice bounce for Reagan. That'll be a 42-yard punt to flip the field. Josh McGee, who played at West Forsyth in this county, was the starting quarterback at nearby Winston-Salem State and is now teaching his 16-year-old quarterback how to run this offense. And you're asking a lot, and he knows that, of, of such a young kid to come in and be the guy that makes the offense go. Jacob Smith is more than capable of doing it. It's just about maturing within the offense and getting to a point where you are understanding everything that's going on around you and you're able to lift the offense up and make everyone around you better. It's just a process. Everyone goes through it as a young player. It's Jacob Smith's turn to do the same. 13 years here at Reagan for Josh McGee. Flipping the chapter for a young quarterback. Speaking of which, sophomore Faison on first and 10. Flings it out. There's Summers. Ooh. Spun him down with one arm. That was an incredible tackle. Jerry Summers on the stop. It's a nice little easy play call right there. Easy yards. On the completion to Cattell. He just grabbed him by the arm and pulled him down. Momentum is a heck of a thing. Jerry Summers, the starting safety. Carter Powell joining him. Both starting safeties out for the year with ACL injuries. So these two have stepped up on second and five. Summers the catch. Summers the juke. Short of the first down. There's Leo Hausrejic. Hausel Rejicic on the tackle. I will say that five times fast. Leo on the stuff. <laughs> really excited to see how he continues to develop, too. I'm telling you, in the next year or two, this Reagan ball club is going to be something to watch because you can see the talent, where it's at in this team. It is oozing with potential, and they have the coaching staff here under Coach McGee and his guys to really excel and really get that talent to where it needs to be, but it's going to take some time. Third and short. Quarterback keeper. Spin move. And just enough for the first down. The running ability of Faison, Brandon, it's Jalen Hurts like. How does he make these plays happen? Well, we actually saw a little bit of this a little bit last year, obviously, in his development, but he is able to just feel the way that running lanes develop and where defenders are in particular. That time, just sensing. A lot of that pressure, pressure towards the middle of the field spins outside and gains a crucial first down to keep this drive alive for the Whirlies. Brandon Faison has 400 yards passing, but also 400 yards running this season. What a threat. Fresh set of downs, the toss outside. Coteau, with a flag down, loses a few yards and might lose a few more. The 
the ball distribution still taking place in this offense. Coteau with his second touch on this drive. And if you're D coordinator Richard Burton, you have to like the result tonight. His defense is playing well. They are. I mean, you're talking about long drives, but one of the teams in the state that it can almost move the ball at will when they really have everything going. So you got to give it up to these Raiders of Reagan right now. They have done an excellent job of sniffing out certain plays, getting into the backfield, and doing something that we didn't see a whole lot of in the first two weeks against Grimsley. That's disrupting this offense. Having to replace Samaj Turner, who was an ACC talent on yeah. the defensive line. A young D-line here for Reagan on first and ten. First and long, in fact. Scramble. Foot race. Quarterback gets the penalty yards back. And that's the secret weapon. Great pressure, great coverage, and you're in 10 yards on the ground. Uh, absolutely. And that's part of, the, again, what we talked about with Faison, the development and how to read everything that's going on in the field. Instead of chucking this football up into coverage, just understand, hey, you're a natural-born athlete. Use that athleticism to take off, run, and get a good chunk of yards back. He actually got a yard based off the penalty yards plus one. It's like watching Michael Vick in Madden 2004. Ooh. You know it's coming. There's a spy on him, and you can't stop the sophomore quarterback that's, from running. That's a cheat code. All due respect to Faison. I don't know if I don't know if we're just there yet, just yet. Now Faison leads to a false start. <laughs> Juked out his entire offensive line, including Jamarius Matier right there, who says, "Come on, coach." I was on one. That's a three-year starter, and we asked Daryl Brown the importance of this offensive line. He said it runs through Buckram and Matier on that left side. Uh, you gotta love that when you've got an exterior or an offensive line that's built on experience, but they're tough. They're hard-nosed, gritty, blue-collar, as he called this team. That's what you want. You get big uglies up front. Those five guys that you're wanting to open running lanes, protect your quarterback. You want them to be rough and tough. Second and long. Pressure! There's a sack. K.J. Woody in the backfield. Big man crashing the party in the middle of the field. Excellent job shedding the block and finishing the play once he got to Brandon in the backfield. Just right here. Almost beats a double team and then finishing it off. Second sack of the year for K.J. Woody. Faison's not out of the woods just yet. On third and long. Summers needs 24. He gets about one. Excellent stop by this Reagan defense. That's what you like to see. Capitalize on the mistake of Grimsley. Set themselves back with a penalty. And then you add on a sack, a stop. Excellent job by this Reagan defense to stand up when they needed to. Rebound from the last two drives and force the first point of the night for the Whirlies. A rarity at that. And what if I told you the UNC commit, Alex Taylor, is also the punter. Star receiver, great punter. Like versatility in the game of football now. Cassidy Harvin back to receive on a shanked punt that goes out at midfield. What an ideal opportunity here if you're Reagan. Well, absolutely. And now this is the this is the time where you've got to capitalize. Defense holds up to the task, forces a punt from this offense of Grimsley. And now as you come back out, Jacob Smith and this offense have work to do. Let's go down to Dave Gorham. What's up, Dave? Hey, Evan. I uh, talked a little bit about Reagan's struggles and uh, Josh McGee. This is kind of echoing what Mark said earlier. Josh McGee told us, we know the struggles are temporary and we're excited about the future. What they try to do in the offseason, and he's been here 13 years, is get position groups together during the offseason, lift together, go out to eat together. They create that sense of camaraderie. Hopefully that camaraderie plays off on this first down completion. That's Jalen Moore. And Jacob Smith, when playing in rhythm, has been really efficient tonight. Yes, he has. And you've seen some of these rollouts trying to get him away from the pressure. They understand that defensive line up front for Grimsley is formidable. So how do you protect your quarterback? Get him outside the pocket into open space and allow him to make simple decisions. Throw or run. That time, choose his throw, and it ends up with a solid result. That's Smith's seventh completion. Now second and three. More. He's got the first. He wants more. Barreled to the ground after a huge run on second down. A great job, an offensive line blocking on the left side. Moore has the vision and then blocking downfield. That's what you want, the second level. Moore can't do it all on his own all the time. 
get some blocking down there, some black shirts get in front and create more yardage. That's not the Nebraska black shirts on defense. That's the black shirts leading the way. Over 75 yards rushing for more tonight. Like the cadence here. Kind of see what maybe Grimsley's trying to do. Some guys creep up to the line. Quick dummy count, allow your offense to reset and reassess. First and 10. This is at the 25 yard line. Reagan settled for a field goal. It's last trip to the red zone. Now on first down, the pass. Tipped. Almost picked. Well, that was a sitting duck as Christian Barrett knocked it up. He's trying to go down the field and make a quick play. A little bit of miscommunication that time. Down the field. And almost a critical mistake right there. Excellent awareness on the defensive side. Two timeouts, 2-12. Plenty of time for Jacob Smith on this drive. And that's the key. Don't rush it. Just take your time. Take what the defense gives you. That's all it's about. That's William Tapp in motion on second and 10. Moore gets a block. Moore spins away. There goes Moore. Touchdown. This kid can do it all from 26 yards out. He's looking at the other sideline, sees Mitchell Summers having a game, says, hey, watch this for a second. Jalen Moore, the speed, the downhill burst initially, and then gets the second level and finishes the run. Keeps his balance through a missed tackle, breaks it, and then gets into the end zone. What a run by the sophomore tailback. He hit the B button 10 straight times to stay on his feet. I mean, what a run, and what a response. What an answer for this young Reagan squad. As one of the fans just said, we got a ball game. Yes, they are do. spot on. As Ryder Lawson just missed the extra point. Keep tabs on that. After a four-play, 50-yard drive, topped off by that Jalen Moore touchdown. Hey, what, how four plays, 50 yards. That's what you want. There's some explosion to this offense as Moore gets down the field, makes another excellent play, and finds Pater. How did he not fall to the ground on this one? He just watched the balance again, and he, break, he broke one tackle, and he almost gets tackled right immediately after that, and just able to stay up. Special kid. All eyes on Moore in the center of the ring, just like a circus. He wants more. Continue to give him the rock. Kid practices well, and he's a gamer. This is a guy that you're going to want to watch here in the triad of North Carolina for the next couple years because he's going to be special. Josh Moore said of his sophomore running back, we knew from day one as a freshman he was special. He was different. We're seeing signs of that tonight. And you see the fiery plays, but he's still fired up. I mean, if he wants to go back out there, he'd do it again. He'll go play defense if you want him to. Think of some of the great North Carolina tailbacks. Of course, Dalvin Cook, who grew up in the Fayetteville area. Yep. Fantastic. This might be the next lineage here in North Carolina. Absolutely. Ryder Lawson with the boots. And that's a touchback. <laughs> in the high school game, if it goes into the end zone, automatic touchback. Regardless of whether or not the returner catches the football or not. So now for Brandon Faison, a tough drive his last time out. A sack. Two negative plays, an important two minutes here for Grimson. Absolutely, and how fast can you move? Where it was for Reagan, hey, take your time, just ex worry about executing, and we'll get there. For Grimsley, this is where the pressure comes back to them. Hey, it's a six-point game, which it has not felt like for the entirety of this first half for the most part. So now can Grimsley go down the field and get some points on the board before halftime comes? Grimsley converted a two-point play. Reagan missed an extra point. That's why we're at six. And on first down, a quick pass, an easy catch, Caden Coteau, and a shoestring tackle for Jerry Summers. Excellent play in space by Summers. Got just enough of Coteau to bring him down. He also has Kevin Durant-like arms. Look at the length of he's that. He's lanky. Yeah, he's got, he's got length reach to him. Another athlete in the secondary for Reagan. At 6'3", with what at least looks like a 6'6 wingspan. Here's the important part, still brought him down in bounds, no less. Nearing a minute and a half to play. One timeout for Grimsley. Phase on with time. Moves out. Pump fake. Beats Leo outside. And gets the first down. Good luck stopping Brandon Phase on on the outside. And it's a shame. Leo had him dead to rights. Just read him. 
the entire way, but from there it's a foot race. And nine times out of 10, Faison Brandon's gonna win that one to the outside. Smart decision by the young quarterback to take off and pick up yards. What an electric quarterback, Faison Brandon, who has two epic names and two epic skill sets. He can run it and he can throw it here on first down. Faison to throw. Faison completes it. Nice shoestring catch. Terrell Anderson toe taps for 11. He looks like he's ready to play on Saturdays right now. Yeah, he sure does. Excellent route to the outside, understanding where he is on the field. Positions himself well, gives his quarterback phase on enough. That's a college, room. that's an NFL catch. Sure is, two feet down. But that's just understanding where you are on the field and also getting out of bounds, making the play, and stopping the clock. Daryl Brown said that Alex Taylor and Sorrell Anderson, the two hardest working receivers he's ever had at Grimsley, and they play off each other so well here on first down. Now going the other way. Nice catch outside. And Kyan Battle does not get out of bounds, so the clock ticks. Tick, tick, tick. I believe the ref wants to start the clock. Yeah, they will. Okay. Clock continues here at midfield. Give Reagan credit. They're giving up some yards right now, but they're not getting up anything over the top. So no yard, large chunks right now. And they're keeping these receivers in bounds for the most part. Now on second and short. Pressure coming. Lob pass. Whoa, what a catch! Alex Taylor, one-handed brilliance. Stop it. I mean, stop it. Are you kidding me? The concentration by Alex Taylor to come down with that football. Not a great throw by Brandon from the quarterback position. Undersails it, and this is an interception. He got mossed, and he got one-handed at the same time. Alex Taylor turned into a DB, trying to come back and knock that away, and then snares it out of the air. What a play. Fans in Chapel Hill, you're in for a fun one next year with Alex Taylor. There was a false start, however. But man, what a weapon in Anderson. That's 4,000 yards combined experience between Anderson and Taylor the last three years. I mean, you could see where that knowledge is and how it applies to the field. Coming back and playing that football almost as a defensive back just to break it up so it's not an interception, but then the wherewithal to stay with it and get that football out of the air. What a tremendous play by the UNC commit. Now a timeout, Reagan, each team with one left. Okay, Mark, take me through coach mode here. 24 seconds left. How do you play this if you're Grimsley? Well, work the sidelines. And if you take that one shot down the middle, you're going to have to use that timeout in order to save time here at the end of the, the first half. But you've got to try to work the sidelines as much as you can. Have you guys understand, hey, no matter what, yardage doesn't matter nearly as much right now. Just get some yards and get out of bounds. Save the clock. That timeout could be critical. If you end up having to play here in the next couple plays, you don't get out of bounds. That clock is running. You have to waste that timeout. You put yourself in a major pressure situation. And Grimsley gets the football to start the second half. So this would be a huge three points. You would want to double dip here. Get at least three points on the board here at the end of the first half. Move it up to a two-score game. And then you get the football back at the beginning of the second half, and you have a chance to really expand on this lead. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in desperate need of a... Daryl Brown with his offensive coordinator, Jesse Tripp. They've worked together the last seven years. And this offense is cooking, Mark. 55 passing touchdowns last year, along with the 4,000 yards rushing. And this year's offense, a different iteration, but this quarterback, Faison Brandon, makes a click. Absolutely. And, and you can see the, all the ability, all the potential that is just coming and oozing out of him and allowing him to show the kind of football player that he is here tonight. Just a sophomore starting quarterback. Now on first and long. To pass, to scramble, to sack. K.J. Woody in the backfield. And now Grimsley burns his final timeout. And that's part of that young understanding process. Hey, you see trouble, throw that ball out of bounds. Just get it away, throw it out of bounds, throw it in the dirt near a receiver, just get it away so you don't take a sack and you have to use that timeout. 
And Leo was that linebacker really forcing the pressure. There. Absolutely. There were a couple of black jerseys back there to make that play. Excellent job. Great play call to bring the pressure that time by Reagan and force Faison Brandon to work his way through the field and make a decision that's going to be tough for a young player to make. In high school football, clock stops on a first down. Not the case in college this year. Inside of two minutes, only case. So you would need 20 yards. Otherwise, you may not have time for a second play. Absolutely, unless, again, you're heading out of bounds here. I think really realistically for Grimsley here, you're either taking a shot to the end zone or you're at least getting some yardage back here on second and 20 just to get yourself in a better position for a field goal potentially. And Grimsley has an excellent kicker, Luke Barnes, who's made both his field goal attempts this year. But at the 35, you're sort of out of field goal range at this point. Yeah. Uh, even as great as some of the kickers are in this area, especially the two that we have in this game here tonight. And that's the one advantage Reagan has. Ryder Lawson's made a 50 yard right. in his career. Right. But even for this level, it is a tall task to ask for any of your kickers to go from this range. Got to get some yardage back, so work those sidelines. Final 15 seconds. Flings it deep, one-on-one, -on -one. dropped. Anderson nearly pulled it off, but a flag. And a late flag. First time we've seen that tonight on the back end of a pretty physical game. These officials have let these kids play so far tonight. Here's our lead referee. Okay, pass interference. Yeah, and that right arm yep, grabbing the front of the jersey. Yep, that's a good call. That's a good call by the officials to catch that. That's a freshman, Stephen Glover, covering the all triad standout at wide receiver in Terrell Anderson. You're putting him on an island right there, and that's a good play call by Grimsley. Take advantage, get one of your guys on an island, and let them go to work. Remember, the clock runs on this snap, and a timeout, Reagan. Okay, Mark, with eight seconds, if you're Grimsley, this is in a really tight scenario. Well, you're starting to take shots. This is either one shot to the end zone here, and then you kick a field goal, potentially, depending on how long the play goes. But what cannot happen, you can't take a sack, and you can't go down in the field to play. You have to either get out of bounds, that ball is incomplete, or you score. That's where the running threat of Faison Brandon, he'll have to be really smart on this next snap. You got to think there's going to be some situation, there's going to be some kind of spy that comes up is just watching him. You would think that would be your middle linebacker, Leo, in the middle. That's going to at least just peer in there and see what he's doing. Just keep an eye on him and keep him honest. But surely, if I am this Reagan defense, I am everything from the goal line up is fair play. They just cannot score here. A veteran secondary against an elite wide receiver core, and we'll see it. Here on what could be the final play of the first half. Would you want it any other way, Evan? Number two team in the state, the Grimsley Whirlies on second and five. This is for the end zone. One on one. It is out of bounds. And Terrell Anderson thought he had it. What coverage by Landon Callahan. Future ACC matchup right there. That's Duke on NC State. What a play by Callahan. Strapped to Anderson the whole way down the field and uses the field to his point. Oof. He punched that's the close. ball out yep. at the last second. But that's a wherewithal. You're forcing him to the sideline, or closing down the space he has to come down and make that catch, and then active hands. Final play of the first half. Brandon. Lobs it up. It is caught for the touchdown. Alex Taylor climbs the ladder. One terrific catch on this drive. Another terrific catch. We saw him concentrate and bring a ball in that was batted around. And then Alex Taylor goes up and makes another play over the corner scales. What an terrific athlete high pointing the ball getting up there the concentration to pull it in two hands that's the second crazy catch of this drive yes for the unc commit 
These wide receivers are as advertised at Grimsley. They are electric. They are the complete package when you're talking about football players, not just wide receivers, but football players. What a first half. Now a two-point conversion to make it a 14-point game. Quarterback runs it. Throws. Nice catch. Jeremiah Deese is out of bounds, though. That doesn't count. And that will end the first half. Pretty efficient there, Mark. Two-minute drive and this touchdown snag. I mean, look at this. Perfect position again, but understanding. Scales is backpedaling, so what's Taylor do? Come back underneath and high point that football. That's a great understanding of where you're at on the football field and going and making a play. Alex Taylor, Terrell Anderson having themselves a first half here in Pofftown. And after a couple of punts back to back, Grimsley steps up with a huge touchdown before halftime. I mean, just huge. You can't really understate how big of a touchdown drive it was. Reagan comes back and scores their first touchdown of the game. And all of a sudden, you start to feel a little bit of pressure for what Reagan is doing to this Grimsley team. What a way to respond for the Whirlies to come out, score with two minutes left in the, in the first half, and in that way, no less, showcasing the skill of this wide receiver core. Let's go down to Dave Gorin with Grimsley's head coach. Dave? Well, certainly a big pickup there right at the last play of the half. Well, we got two big time playmakers on the outside and just kept giving them a chance and uh, they came through. Thoughts on that first half overall? Well, I thought we played okay at times, kind of like I said earlier. I mean, we played well in spurts, but we hadn't put, you know, consecutive quarters together really. So um, we'll talk about it a half and uh, we'll continue to get better as close as these two teams have played over the last couple of years, you, you want to be up by more than one score, right? Yeah, we uh, got a long ways to go. Long ways Thank to you. go. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. All right, that's Daryl Brown. We'll be back with the My 48 Friday Night Rivals Halftime Report after this. Stay with us. Throughout the 2023 Carolina Classic Fair Friday Night Rivals season, Bojangles will recognize an exceptional senior student athlete from each participating school with a plaque presentation prior to each game. This week's Bojangles Scholar Athletes are from Reagan High School, David Wooward. Reagan's David Wooward is a captain of the varsity football team and an avid swimmer for Shallowford Lakes Summer League. He is a Crosby Scholar on the National Honor Society and on AB Honor Roll. David is a member of FCA, the Drama Club, and the Tech Club. He attends and volunteers at Elevation Church where he is on the production team, managing the technology and sound production for services. And from Grimsley High School, Tobin Dunning. 
Grimsley's Tobin Dunning plays varsity lacrosse and football where they won back-to-back -back Metro 4A conference championships and went to the state championships in 2022. Tobin holds a 4.47 GPA, is an international baccalaureate candidate, and is on the National Honor Society. Tobin volunteers his time at the Bryan YMCA in Greensboro mentoring youth sports. David Tobin and other nominated students are also eligible to win a $5,000 scholarship to be presented at the end of the season courtesy of Bojangles. Bojangles proudly gives back to our community and is honored to be the sponsor of Friday Night Rivals Scholar Athlete Award. And we are back live, joined by Reagan High School Principal Brad Royal, a guy I've known for just a little bit. Yeah. Uh, this game so far, yeah, last play, huh? Oh, what a great play. I'll tell you what, their receiver made an unbelievable catch right before that. Um, but give them a lot of credit. You know, they're a very, very good football team, uh, very well coached. Uh, that's why they're number one in the state. <laughs> you have a pretty good coach, too, and I know th these two teams have gone back and forth the last couple of years, so expecting a maybe a little tighter second half. So first week of school in the books, how'd it go? Oh, unbelievable, man. I tell you, we have the absolute best kids in the world here at Raider Nation. They come to school. They're excited about being here. Uh, man, it's just been great. And, you know, you look out here tonight, the crowd is just full. The kids are having a great time in the student section. Grimsley brought a great crowd. I mean, Mr. O'Donnell, he's a great principal. He does a great job over there. And thankful that they came out. And just been a good week so far, man. All over social media here tonight. One school, one community, one family. Tell me a little bit about that. So we really try to cap capture this idea of family. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's important that everyone understands that when your kids come to school, they're just our kids. They're not your kids, they're not my kids, they're our kids. And so this concept of family is something we've been pushing for almost a decade here at Reagan. Uh, it's taken off. I think the community's really bought into it. You know, everybody says there's something special at Reagan, and, and we agree. It's this idea that, you know, Dave, we're just family. Appreciate it, Brad. Thanks for yeah, the time. Man, Good to see you. Seeing you, too. Same see you. All right, Brad Royal, principal here at Ronald Reagan High School. We'll be back with Grimsley principal Jed O'Donnell in just a sec. Stay tuned. Dave Gorin back here at Reagan High School in Puff Town, where it's 21 to 9. The Whirlies of Grimsley leading this one over Reagan High School. Joined now by Grimsley High School Principal Jed O'Donnell. Jed, great to see you. And great to see you as well, and thanks for having us. You're welcome. I bet you're having a pretty good time so far. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a great evening. It's been a great start to the school year. It's wonderful to see so many of our students and Reagan students out here. This is what Friday nights is all about. 
You know, I think the football team is a great representation of our school, where we have a group of individuals coming together as a collective team, working hard for a common goal. Uh, we were talking beforehand, you might notice from Jed's accent, he's not from Manchester, Connecticut or Manchester, New Hampshire. You're from which Manchester? Manchester, England. The original? Yes, the one and only. <laughs> that's, that's what you told me before. Uh, we, we're, we talked to both coaches yesterday to prepare for this game, and both very impressive. You're obviously very proud of your coach, Daryl Brown. You know, Coach Brown is, a, is, a, is an incredible coach, but he's more than just a coach. He's a, an amazing human being. He's a mentor. He's a father figure. He's an incredible teacher, and we're very lucky to have him in Greensboro. And a football team, especially a successful one as Grimsley has been, that can create a little ripple effect throughout the school, right? You know, it not only creates a ripple effect throughout the school, but it creates a ripple effect throughout Greensboro. Uh, it's great that we represent Greensboro in such a positive manner, and uh, it's, it's creates such a buzz around the school, and we're very proud. Is this the first time you've had a musical accompaniment while you did an interview? It's just like the angels is just coming down to me. You know, the angels are always looking over me, as my mum used to say. And how about a message for Worley Nation before you go? Yeah, you know, Worley, uh, Worley Nation goes way beyond Greensboro and Guilford County. It goes throughout the state and throughout the United States. And so we appreciate all the support that we receive from Boone to Beaufort, from coast to coast. And remember, as always, go Worleys. And, and I bet there's a little that goes overseas too, right? It certainly does. We've got, they've got a big fan base back in, uh, in Manchester and throughout Ireland. Appreciate your time. Thanks, Jeff. Thank Jen. you so much for having us. All right, good luck, second half. Bye -bye. Yep. And right now, let's take a look at some highlights from around the country on Friday Night Rivals. We got away with it. Wide open. What? They come out with a trick Oh, that was a beautiful done. They call Ridge real sweet. And he's going to end zone to the end zone. Beautiful play. Hayes lets it fly towards the end zone. Touchdown, Matt Manning. Chunk. Block steps up. Now he's going to have a chance up the near side. Look at Joe Watt going across midfield inside the 40. Still on his feet. Makes a move in the 20. 10. Touchdown, Bulldogs. Now these next two drives are going to have to play up to the pace. Oh, it's going to be intercepted after the deflection. And it's going to be a pick six. Cleveland had one last week. Rolls all the way left. Back to the middle. Caught! The snap, the hold, the kick is good! Indy wins with a triple overtime comeback. The old Pelovin for Marion County on to attempt the extra point. It's a fake. Warriors to the backside. They got it set up, he goes airborne! Touchdown, Marion wow. County! Oh. It was Lou Tipton! Unbelievable! That was incredible, thanks to the air.
Hey, this is DJ Hargrave, event and branding manager with the Carolina Classic Fair, which is coming up soon, September 29th through October 8th. And honestly, you can expect a lot of the great fair traditions that we're used to seeing at the fair. Of course, we have the grandstand concerts, all the fair foods that everyone loves. We have the rides that everyone loves as well. But we also have some new plans for this year. Um, we have some new specials in place that especially I believe that the um, middle school, elementary and high school students and parents will love this year. So it's important for the Carolina Classic Fair to support high school football because we support all the school systems surrounding, you know, the Northwest region of North Carolina. We are the second largest agricultural fair in the state and a huge part of that is because of the support of families, students and parents of the school systems in Forsyth County and beyond. And in fact, we're doing something special this year for students of uh, the surrounding areas, especially once the Salem for South County school system. So this year we have school day for the fair for Monday. Now, we always have school day at the fair, but this year we're adding in something new. And that new addition to school day this year is that you can donate three school supplies on Monday, October 2nd, which is school day, and you'll get free admission to the fair. Thanks for watching the Carolina Classic Fair Friday Night Rivals. Again, remember the fair is this year, September 29th through October 8th. We cannot wait to see you there. Enjoy the rest of the game, and we'll see you at the fair. All right, welcome back to the My 48 Halftime Report, and thanks to DJ with the Carolina Classic Fair. And now let's check out our pretzel stacking contest. We had lots of fun with this last week at East Surrey, and uh, we'll see how Mason on the left and Antoine on the right do stacking as many pretzels as they can on their head. We'll see who can do it best. So oh, Mason just dropped his, Antoine's still going. And we'll see how this works out. Don't forget, this contest combines the good food, the fun games, and stuffed animal prizes, all of which can be found at the Carolina Classic Fair September 29th through October 8th. And here, let's see, it's looking good. I think we have a winner. I think it's Antoine. Antoine, your winner. Mason, I think a little sore loser there. We're gonna have to have a little chat about that. Evan, what do you think? Well, he's, Antoine's got the dinosaur, so he's celebrating. That's the best part right there. I think he also grittied after winning. Is that a thing? Not for us in the booth. You know, Mark, if you and I did a pretzel contest, I'd probably eat more of the pretzels than you would, but I think your head's a little flat. Oh, oh, so oh, Evan, don't. You'd don't be able to stack some more. <laughs> Thank you to our staff. They're helping to clean up. Always important here. Let's show you some highlights from the first half. And man, Mitchell Summers was off and running early. I mean, just showcasing the balance, the speed, the power, everything you want in a running back. He was on, had on display on that first drive. And then Jalen Moore and company tried to keep up with them, but good defense by Grimsley. Just terrific defense. We knew we were getting out of the Whirlies here tonight. The experience showcased there in the first half and also the talent. And then the quarterback going to work. Faison Brandon with a rushing touchdown and this creative play. Maybe not by design, but all of a sudden the captain's like, I got it. Just what a play there. And but Reagan really, you gotta think about it, didn't go away in the first half. They took multiple punches from this Grimsley team, but stayed in it till the end. And then the play of the night, whew, Alex Taylor climbing the ladder. Just great understanding where he is on the football field in relation to his defender. Excellent play by the UNC commit. And that was the last play of the first half, which sends us to these numbers. You know, from a passing standpoint, when you're 128 and 128, what an efficient half for Grimsley. Talk about balance. It doesn't get any more balance than that right there. Splitting the difference between your passing and rushing offense, exactly where you want to be going into halftime. Five to six on third down conversions. The one area to clean up is those penalties. But Reagan, they've hung around in this game. The stats aren't going to be super telling in that, but they've done an excellent job of continuing to fight against a very solid Grimsley football team. Faison 11 to 14 for those 120. He's been really efficient. And then Smith, only 5 of 10. Now the big plays of Jalen Moore have kept Reagan in it. And now Grimsley gets the ball. So this is a huge start to the second. And really, this could be a drive that more or less is going to break the game open potentially for Grimsley here. We're going to see the resolve of this young Reagan team coming out of halftime and where they stand from a mentality standpoint. We have Pirates and Whirlies. I don't know if those two would ever meet on Nat Geo, but it would be interesting. Because here we have a top 10 program in Grimsley. The reigning state finalists come up one quarter short against New Bern last year. 
and Reagan who's been to the second and third round multiple times in the last five years but now it's a heavy hitting test tonight. Well absolutely and this is just part of that developmental process that Coach McGee and his staff knows is going to be undertaken here this year. It's just one of those obstacles they're going to have to overcome. If you want to be the best you have to beat the best and they're certainly going up against the best here tonight in Popton. So for more with Coach McGee here's Dave Gorn on the sidelines. All right thanks Evan. Uh, Coach McGee that rough last play of the half. I know as a coach it's that second score you don't want to get down. Yeah, I think everybody in Pofftown knew what was coming. And, uh, you know, we made a few plays there in that drive, and then that, that got us on the last one. But really proud of our guys in their fight right now. What did you tell them at halftime? I uh, just believe in what we do. You know, we got to set the tone here. They get the ball. Uh, we need a quick three and out, and we got to keep doing what we do on offense. And But really proud of them in the fight. Well, what did you like that you guys did offensively? Oh, we ran the football well. You know, we ran the ball downhill. Uh, Jalen Moore is tough. I think we're making some really good underneath throws and holding them accountable a little bit. And uh, we got to keep doing it. Appreciate your time. Good luck. Thank you, man. Right, take care. Josh McGee, head coach of the Reagan Raiders. We'll see how they do here in the second half. We will take a break. We'll be back with the second half right after this. Beautiful night in Poptown, North Carolina. And so far, number two team in the state, the Grimsley Whirlies are up ahead of the hometown Poptown Raiders. 21 to 9. Grimsley gets the ball to start this second half. And as Dave noted, as both coaches have noted, last two matchups, one score games. It's a big third quarter now for Reagan to hang around. I think it's really a big first drive for Reagan to really set a tone here in the second half and, and let the Grimsley Whirlies know, hey, we're not going away in this football game. You got us at the end of the first half. We know that. Now it's our time to get back in this thing. But it's going to start on this first drive. They've got to set the tone here, not give up any points, and really let Grimsley know that they are not going anywhere here in the second half. There's the talented Ryder Lawson, who has multiple Power 5 offers as a kicker. Powerful boot for the junior. It's an extra point in the first half as well, and very unusual to see him have such a mishap. Most importantly, he has the special boot on that right foot for kicking. And sends away a bullet. This will stay in play. Returnable for Terrell Anderson. Anderson is sandwiched and goes down inside the 15. Great tackle by William Tapp. I really went after Anderson that time. Anderson was kind of tiptoeing, waiting for something to develop. It tapped like Anderson right was waiting for the block, and the block never happened. Well, Summers actually missed him right there. For all the good that he's done tonight, the one mistake he's made did not pick up William Tapp that time. 
and he wastes no time getting to Anderson and making the stop. He literally tap danced through four blockers that were lined up, and he just pinballed his way through. Good instinctual play by the wide receiver. Who will also be the backup safety right. tonight. Remember, Reagan's top two safeties out for the year with ACL injuries. So some new faces on defense. The familiar one is Faison Brandon, 128 yards passing in the first half and over 50 yards rushing. Expect a heavy dose of the run game here. And a flag. That's a delay of game. So the ball is at the 10-yard line of Grimsley. going to say expect a, a probably a heavy diet of Mitchell Summers on this drive. Because you know Reagan's going to want to come out and apply that pressure. you got to hit him right back. This is first and long. Play action. Pressure. Brandon has to throw it away. Good job by Connor Berry to get in there. Just like that. He's applying that pressure, shedding blocks, but you got to finish that right there. Understand who you're trying to chase down at the quarterback spot. Faison Brown, Brandon is not easy to get down. Who is 11 of 15 and has evaded sacks all night. The sophomore who filled in for Ryan Stevens last year in this game and led a second half comeback. Now it's his duty tonight. Here on second down, it's Summers. Dances off one. And Leo spins him down. It's a third and long upcoming. Really seems like the way that this Reagan defense swarms. If they can stop that initial burst from this running game of Grimsley right now, they can swarm and get to the ball carrier. They do a very good job of tracking where the football is and hurrying to it. Led by the bowling ball in the middle, K.J. Woody, the self-described terror for corner pins. 5'8", <laughs> 220 in the middle. Had a sack in the first half, too, so it would be an excellent time for this Reagan defense for them to come up with another one here on third down. What can Faison Brandon pull out in the 7-10 split? Third and 13. Pressure. Heaves it deep. And has a man. Terrell Anderson with the catch out at midfield. At some point, you had to figure one of these deep shots was going to hit. There weren't a ton of them until the end of the first half, and now they air it out down the sideline. Anderson, an excellent catch, extends the arms, goes and gets that football. What a throw, what a catch, what a play. This is a matchup in the ACC. Taylor at UNC, Callahan at Duke. What a dynamic matchup. And you knew it was going to go back and forth. Two guys that are just as talented as anyone in the state. And going back and forth with each other like that, showcasing their talents. Now a first and ten. That's a backwards pass that is caught. Uh-oh, here comes the trouble. Good tackle by Woody and crew. Leo there on the first stop. So impressed by Leo at that middle linebacker spot. Getting out in space and going toe-to-toe. -to -toe Hausel Rajacic. Right. you got to say it like you mean it. Hausel Rajacic. Going out there and making a play on one of the premier receivers in the state. And Anderson staying toe to toe and staying on long enough to allow Woody and the rest of his defenders to come on over and make that play. Second and 15 after the loss of five. Reagan's defense has forced Grimsley in long situations this whole game. Now an inside handoff. Summers gets out to the 50. So third and nine upcoming. How important is this stop for Reagan defensive? Oh, it's huge. You give up the long pass. You really set yourself up well. You, you were right, Evan. They, they put Grimsley back behind the chains in a situation where they don't want to be. They allow that deep shot. Now they've done it again. Now on third down, can they hold up this time and get Grimsley off the field? In the first half, Grimsley five of six on third down. This is third and nine. Brandon throws. Anderson catches, and he's short. That's fourth and about two. To be honest with you, I would be surprised if Grimsley comes off the field here. Just a nice, easy pitch and catch this time. Anderson's the, the go-to guy on this drive. Maybe some of that attention that Alex Taylor drew at the end of the first half has some guys shaded his way, so they're going to Anderson on the other side. The aggressive Daryl Brown going for it here on fourth and one. 
reigning state finalists at 4A, the highest level of football here in North Carolina. Said it earlier in the game, if Reagan was going to take over the line of scrimmage, it has to be in these short yardage situations. It's got to be the same thing for Grimsley. Fourth and one. Quarterback keeper. Big hole. Bye-bye, Brandon. He's inside the 10. Needed one. And that look by Josh McGee tells the story. When you saw the defense sell out to Mitchell Summers. And Faison Brandon smartly pulls the football off the left side of the line. A gaping hole, the C parted, and he ran right through it. Just a great read by the sophomore quarterback to get upfield and in a hurry. Jerry Summers saved a touchdown after that Crescent Ford first down. Here's first and goal. Summers, gaping hole, touchdown! One of the best running backs, pound for pound in the state, cashes in for a second touchdown. And really a, a very Grimsley-esque drive, if you will. That was the first drive, I think, all game, Evan, where they've displayed everything they have at full capacity. Passing game got going, running game did its job, and then finish off the drive with Mitchell Summers. Just all weapons on display that time. And Grimsley sends a statement to open the, the second half. That's a 90-yard drive in three minutes. I mean, what else could you ask for if you're this coaching staff for Grimsley? This is Jackson Henry, his first extra point of the night. They've switched kickers a couple of times. Grimsley pounding the rock for success. Running the score up, now up 19. Welcome back to Pofftown, North Carolina. Close captioning for this game is brought to you by Caring Hands. Caring Hands Home Health, We've got hands-on, compassionate care around the clock. Nothing helps the hands of a quarterback and feed it to Mitchell Summers for second touchdown of the night. It's gotta be that easy, right? I mean, you've got such a, a talented roster around you. Over 150 yards on the ground, 150 yards through the air tonight. A few times do you see such balance, especially at the high school level, where it really is one way or the other. So often where teams are either run heavy, pass heavy, this Grimsley team can beat you in so many different ways. Offensively, defensively, special teams, you name it, they've got it. Luke Barnes sends this one away. That'll stay in play. And now Callahan looks to break one open. That is a tough dude to tackle as he gets past the 25. Now this is a make or break drive for Reagan. Realistically, in a, in a ball game like this, where you've got to have points, you've got to convert, this really is a make or break drive for such a young team. And they're doing what they can to stay in this football game. It's, it's a tall task, and everyone knew it coming in. But they're as confident a bunch as any that you'll find out there. Jacob Smith in that first half, 5 of 10 passing. Led by a sophomore offensive line, all youngsters. Here's a first and ten. Keeper. Not much room. Ooh, Smith got tackled hard on the backside there. Let's see if Jacob's okay. Now that's a hamstring issue right there. My hammy's just hurt watching this. You can kind of hear the Reagan fan base breathe a sigh of relief. 
you get caught up in those tackles sometimes, you get wrapped up a little bit. Those are tough to watch, tougher to handle, but Jacob Smith, who committed to NC State just this week. Yep. A lot of Wolfpack guys on him. What have you noticed from a leadership standpoint here in year two, the sophomore quarterback? Well, when we saw him last year, obviously he was, he was so fresh to the to the game of football at the high school level. Just a freshman, of course. Uh, may have been his second start with us. And now you can see where it's developed to a point where he's got some composure, understands the offense a little bit better, know what's going on around him. And that's what you want to see. Uh, the quarterback spot where you've got to have leadership. He has developed that, and it's going to continue to get better while the skill catches up with it as well. And Josh McGee said, we want to put more of the offense in his hands in year two. This is second and ten. The ball's in his hands with pressure and a fumble. Loose ball. Still moving. And Reagan gets it back. Now the question is, is this a change of possession or a long fumble? Looked like a long fumble. So not a fresh set of downs and a second forever. I do not believe that Grimsley had that possession, but right there just beat off the right side. Easton in high. there. And then this loose turkey. It turns into a free gift for Reagan. Wow. Keenan Hatcher is going to pinch himself on that one. Reagan has to get to the 36-yard line on third down. And that will not do it. What a play, though, by Eason to essentially put this game out of reach on third down. And just beating the right tackle to that spot, getting inside and finishing it off in good hands as well. Sometimes I think defenders get in there, they want to make the tackle, get the sack, which is great, don't get me wrong. But the next level of understanding is, how can I create more out of this situation? And if you get your hands up like that, you see where the football is, swipe for it and give yourself an opportunity to get a turnover. And this is without Power 5 commit Bryce Davis with a knee injury out tonight. Eason, the other defensive end, and here's the punt. It's a very short kick that bounces in the wrong way if you're Reagan. So Grimsley with a great field position. It's a matchup that here in the next year or two is going to be even more enticing. We know of the lineage here and the legacy that, that Reagan, in its short lifetime amongst the high school ranks, has really created for itself on the gridiron. Grimsley, an established, historic high school in its own right. But here in the next year or two, when the experience on both sides continues to go up and elevate itself, this is going to be potentially the premier matchup in the state of North Carolina. Here in 4A state football, first and 10, handoff to Summers, who dives forward for a couple of yards. Think about the running back tandem. Mitchell yeah. Summers, a sophomore, Jalen Moore, a sophomore. Both are 1,000-yard rushers, and we're seeing it tonight. I mean, it's going to be exciting. <laughs> I'm telling you, the next two years, if you have an opportunity to see these two schools play, whether it's here, Grimsley, wherever, neutral site, Take the chance to go see them play because you're going to see some electrifying football players, especially at the running back spot between Summers and Moore. Two of the top ten running backs in total yards in the state entering tonight. We're seeing it. Now on second and seven. Back to the sophomore. Summers, this is where he's special. All the way to the 25. He gallops for 20 yards there. Such a shifty tailback, and when he gets open on those Crescent Ford first downs, you can't touch him. Well, and that's the thing, and I was just about to say, what I kind of think about when I see his running style, I almost see something of like a Nick Chubb in the way he runs. It's very hard-nosed, downhill, physical. I mean, that's just what you want in a running back, and it's so beneficial to what you do when you have a guy who gets downhill and gets those tough yards. Play action. Look at the pressure here. Whoa. Body slammed to the ground. This is WWE Friday night with a big sack from Nazir Blackman. Man, about four to five different black uniforms back there. And Blackman just comes into the backfield. How do you describe that tech? It's no contest. Borderline suplex right there, right? We'll take a timeout, check on Nazir Blackman. And we'll come back for the rest of this third quarter in just a minute here in Pofftown, North Carolina. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome back to Pofftown, North Carolina. Big run for Mitchell Summers, who's now over 160 yards. Another big run for Summers. Again, reading his blocks and just getting downfield. And that's really where he shines, is just reading those blocks and getting downfield in a hurry. There's no hesitation in the way he runs. He finds the hole, hits it, and he's on his way. First and goal. Back to Summers. Josh Short. Connor Berry saves the touchdown. I mean, really, you think about all the, the qualities and the attributes he has. You really think of running backs and where you want them to be, and he seems like he has all of that from a running standpoint. But then you add on the fact that he is 5'6", and how much harder that actually makes him to tackle because he's already so low to the ground, so he has more power that way, and it's a smaller target to try to hit. Now a second and goal for this Grimsley offense. Back to him. It's a three touchdown night for Mitchell Summers. That is a bang hard apparel touchdown. Go hard with bang apparel. A new logo athletic brand offering performance fabric, athletic apparel to help you stay motivated with the right fit. And nothing fires up an offense than feeding your tailback for three touchdowns. And really, you got to give it up, not just to Summers, but his offensive line has been exceptional tonight. Opening holes, sealing off defenders, allowing them, him to work his way outside, inside, wherever he wants to go. Just assisting him in all his ways tonight. So that was a six-play 48-yard drive and might have just wrapped up this game here for Mitchell Summers. I mean, just a great job. Ceiling inside, reads to the outside. There's no one home. Offensive line on the right side does an excellent job. Sealing the defense in. And that is a no contest walk in every day of the week. We're coming up in the fourth quarter. Stay tuned to find out who's our Carolina Classic player pay of the game. I think I know who the player of the game is. He's sitting on the bench in the tailback position. The Carolina Classic Fair, there's magic in the fair. Just got to think about how easy of a decision it almost seems like at this point and how many great plays and players there have been in this game tonight, right? Then we have our player of the game from Carolina Classic Fair. The Carolina Classic Fair, there's magic in the fair. I think the play of the game was the fantastic catch for Anderson. <laughs> which, well, well, which Anderson one? or Taylor? Oh, Taylor, they both did. Right. Yeah, Anderson on the far side, Taylor on the near side, and then that man, Mitchell Summers, who entered this game with six touchdowns. He's got three more. Just last week alone, he scored six times. Yeah. In a, in a six out of the seven rushing touchdowns for this Grimsley team against Rollsville, who those not familiar with the state is easily one of the better teams in the state. I believe ranked 17th at the moment. Stay tuned in the fourth quarter. We'll have our Linder Turf and Tractor scoring summary. You can score a great deal with your next Kubota at Linder Turf and Tractor coming up to Greensboro on McConnell Drive off I-40. By the way, ever since doing these reads, I only see Linder Turf and Tractor signs and only see Kubotas driving around town. <laughs> It's like my brain's just narrowly focused on one of the sponsors. That is called good marketing. I want to thank all of our hardworking folks putting this together tonight. Number two team in the state of North Carolina, the Grimsley Whirlies, taking advantage in Reagan's home opener here in Pofftown, North Carolina, with Mark Covert, the Catawba offensive line standout. I'm Evan Budrovich, legend reporter Dave Gorn on the sidelines tonight. And Lori Bates calling the shots as our lead producer here in Winston-Salem. That kickoff is returnable for Jalen Moore, the running back. And Moore is body slammed by a bunch of Whirlies. Tyquarius Hayes, the first one in on it. Okay, Mark, what's gone wrong for Reagan's offense tonight? Why have they not been able to execute? Well, it really, I think a lot of it just comes to growing pains. It's an offense that is finding its way, realistically. And just throwing the football, they haven't really had a whole lot of consistency there, whether it's been protection, just not allowing their guys to get off the ball well, some miscommunication. Running the ball has been really where their bread and butter has been with Jalen Moore. And they've got to continue to do that. I just want to see some consistency as we finish out this ball game heading into the fourth. Smith on first down, pressured, missing his target. 
That maturity was a big question from his head coach, Josh McGee. How does Smith handle these moments when things aren't going well? well you just got to handle it as if nothing is going wrong. That's where you got to be at because as a quarterback, you've got to be even keel. You can't allow any sort of pressure to get to you, any whatever the circumstances are. You have to act as if it's still 0-0, and you're going out there to, to get your first points of the game every single drive you're out there. And that's where it's going to come into play as far as this offense continuing to progress. One play at a time, one drive at a time. A run on second down. This is Jalen Moore, who's jackknifed to the ground. Christian Barrett flying up for the tackle. This is a defense that lost Nick Caldwell to the college ranks, Keyshawn Jones playing in FCS football, and two new corners have stepped up. Just an excellent program that is run in Greensboro there with Grimsley. How about this? 17 players aren't currently in any level of college. What a pipeline in Greensboro, North yeah. Carolina. And they know it, but it all comes down to the environment and the culture you have there, the coaching staff that is able to help you find and fulfill your potential. And you got a heck of a coaching staff over there in Greensboro with these Grimsy Whirlies. We also have a whistle. That was a substitution. Bakari Colberry exits. Big shoes to fill. Remember, Jamal Jarrett, the Georgia defensive lineman, who's in the two deep for Coach Kirby Smart right now as a freshman. He anchored this defense last year. I mean, think about what that says about how good he was at the high school level. Freshman in the two deep for the national champs. Here comes pressure. Smith rolls out and misses his target. This Grimsley defense, since giving up a touchdown, how have they been so special? Bringing pressure. That's where it's really been. They've just dialed back the pressure, said, hey, we know we're going up against an inexperienced group. Let's test them. Let's see how well they can hold their water and protect their quarterback when he drops back to throw. They've been testing it since that touchdown drive and have had great success with it. It's been pressured 10 times tonight. That's just on my count. Could be a bunch more in the eyes of Jacob Smith. And a busy punting unit continues. This is Aaron Gutierrez. Pretty good kick. Nice punt. Nice bounce for Reagan. And that'll flip the field. 46 yards on the boot from Gutierrez. We told you Grimsley special, producing college football players, elite talent. And yet, the Grimsley Whirlies, they have not talked about last year's state runner-up at all. The entire offseason, it has not been brought up. Well, what are you talking about? It's really the mindset of, hey, we got to move on. Last year was last year. We got to the state championship game. That's great. Even if we won it, that's great. That was last year. You got to continue to move forward. The quest is what's next. And that's exactly where their mindset is. Here's a first down handoff. Mitchell Summers, who trips and gains a yard. Grimsley has played top 25 Mount Tabor in the state, top 10 Rollsville in the state, and now with Reagan coming up, those are three playoff teams in 4A football. What has Grimsley learned about themselves in these games? Well, just learning how to find their way again after you have so much success for them last year, and maybe this is an annual thing for Grimsley, but after having the success you had last year, how do you replace the guys that departed? And so far, it's been a resounding, hey, we know exactly what we're doing. Lobbing it up, overshooting Alex Taylor. But that's not to say that they're, they're perfect, right? There's still been some issues with maybe mental mistakes. Tonight, you'll sit in there and say, hey, they had several, seven penalties in the first half. You got to be able to get rid of those mental mistakes. As the year goes on and playoff football starts getting closer and closer, the teams that make less mental mistakes are going to be having are going to have a better opportunity to find themselves having postseason success. And Grimsley's still got to get there. Grimsley's still throwing the ball up 26. You yeah. can tell they're they're playing for it here on third down with pressure. Finds his target and right at the sticks is Jeremiah Deese. He might have enough for the first down and he does. Good strong throw from Faison Brandon. Sits back in the pocket, has pressure going around him. Good job of maintaining a pocket by his offensive line. That's a Crescent Ford first down. Faison Brandon is not old enough to drive himself to class. How is he driving this offense to me? That's the question, isn't it? I mean, he's just done an excellent job of commanding the offense, and that's, that's really what you want to see. Talking about Jacob Smith on the other side, 
the command from Faison Brandon tonight has been exceptional. And he flips it out to a weapon like Terrell Anderson, the NC State commit, and gets an easy eight yards. He has 200 yards passing now, and it's been five or six different receivers getting involved. And he's got five or six different receivers really where he can spread the ball around too. That's the big difference. And understanding, hey, you don't have to lock into one guy. Someone's going to be open down the field, and they've just got an array of playmakers that make that so much easier to grasp. So for Faison Brandon, it's just about developing. And if as long as he continues to get better. Fumble. Oh, interesting. Right that was front. a forward pass, yep. so incomplete. That'll hurt Faison Brandon's passing percentage tonight. Well, it's, it's certainly not a fumble. And this is one of those new wrinkles, or newer, I guess I should say, in football. Instead of doing it where you got him coming behind you, that ball drops, it's a fumble at that point. So just put it in front. If it drops, it's an incomplete pass. Live to play another down. So this is third and medium. Grimsley has been 80% of the time moving the chains on third down. You don't see that in high school football. So Summers adds to those numbers and gets tackled forward. Moving the chains once again, pressing forward first down. Doesn't it really feel, though, like if this offense as good as it already is, as, as Faison Brandon continues to develop, he's going to be the key to unlocking it going forward. This kid's special, man, as a sophomore. Yep. He backed up Ryan Stevens all year on a state finalist team, and now he's running the show. And just think about what that is. Just to even see that and be a part of it, to get that experience on that level, makes a world of difference. So when you get on the field, all you've got to do is react, get better, and read defenses, and the rest takes care of itself. A world of difference for the Whirlies. We're putting on a show tonight here in Pocktown, North Carolina. Close captioning for tonight's game is brought to you by Caring Hands. Caring Hands Home Health. Your family's needs are our top priority when they're in our care. Beautiful shot in Pocktown, North Carolina. This park is known as the graveyard, and Grimsley looks to bury the hatchet tonight. Up 26 as we start this fourth quarter. Faison Brandon lets it fly. This is deep and tipped away. Landon Callahan wins the future All-ACC matchup against Alex Taylor. Really love watching the matchups that Landon Callahan's been a, a part of tonight. Not really grown, going the way of the Raiders from Reagan, but he's been exceptional tonight in coverage, able to stay step for step with these receivers down the field, displaying that coverage skill that's going to make him quite the asset in the ACC. Anderson has 70 yards receiving. Taylor has 50 yards, both a UNC and NC State committed receivers. Here's a second down handoff. Mitchell Summers, the other option. Look at Summers speeding away. 
cutting it back. How do you stop this guy, Mitchell Summers? He gets 31. Well, first you got to find him. That's the whole thing behind that big offensive line he has in front of him. You got to find him amongst that, and by the time you do, more often than not, it's too late. He's already at the second level. What a dynamic runner for the Whirlies. Mitchell Summers, six touchdowns last week against Rollsville. He has three more tonight. That's a season's worth of effort. Now in the red zone on first and 10. Anderson lobs it up. This is a wide open pass, but couldn't find Alex Taylor. I try to sluggo out there on Callahan and beat him. For the first time tonight, it really seemed like Landon Callahan was beat and just missing on that throw was Faison Brandon to Alex Taylor. That was a golden opportunity. What a route run by the senior wide receiver. This quarterback's really efficient. 17 of 23. That was a rare miss tonight. I think that's the next step in his development really tonight is just finding the consistency. Talked about that as one of the keys. And Grimsley has been certainly consistent here tonight. What a tackle by Nazir Blackman. As Summers nears 200 yards on the ground. Nazir Blackman is a two-sport athlete. What a tremendous weapon at linebacker. Big linebacker at that, too. Rangy, athletic, has a great nose for the football. Understands leverage and points. That's what you want. You need a smart guy to man the middle of your, your field. Nazir Blackman is certainly a guy that fits that bill. We have a flag here. And a sideline warning on Reagan. I'll be honest, I'm a bit confused here. I don't know. Unless there was a Just coach. a warning, no, yeah. no yardage. Correct. And Josh McGee, there's the head coach, saying what else could go wrong right now? Unless a coach had snuck out on the field or outside that box, the only way. Grimsley back in the red zone here on third and seven. Anderson to throw. He's got an option. Look who it is, Alex Taylor, with his second touchdown of the night. Grimsley continues to romp with these passing touchdowns. Give props to Faison Brandon on that throw right there. Sees the pressure barreling towards him. Just sits in the pocket, steadies his feet, and throws a dart to Alex Taylor right down the seam. That's the next play. That's what you want to see for him to progress and for this offense to become even more dangerous. How about as dangerous as seven plays, 74 yards in three and a half minutes? This is the icing on the cake for the Grimsley Whirlies. And Jackson Henry couldn't kick it. Bobbled snap there. That may be one issue that Coach Gerald Brown brings up this week. But the passing game has been clicking. Anderson, Taylor, all Grimsley tonight here in Pocktown. Taking a look at Raider Nation here at Reagan High School in Pofftown. The home of George Greer here in Pofftown, North Carolina, former St. Louis Cardinals hitting coach. And one of the first post offices in the entire North Carolina, the entire state. Some fun facts you learn along the way gearing up for these matchups. 
Rich history. Within the state of North Carolina. And believe it or not, this field used to be a lake. Yeah. Now it's drained beautifully and cut every afternoon by the athletic director here at Reagan High School. That's Mitch Adams. So you can see why the, the ground takes so well to it, of course. Thanks for joining us here on our Friday Night Rivals Game of the Week. We're in Pofftown, North Carolina, just outside of Winston-Salem. With Mark Covert, I'm Evan Budrovich, Dave Gorn on the sideline. And this kicker takes a full-out sprint before booting it away. And Callahan brings it out. Callahan gets just near the 20. Good tackle there by Ja'Kai Eason. This Grimsley program, state runners-up last year, now ranked first in 4A football. What's the ceiling for the Grimsley Worlds? A state championship. Uh, realistically, you put them up there with anyone, they are going to be major competitors throughout the state. Uh, the triad being one of those premier areas for high school football in the state of North Carolina. And they'll go toe-to-toe -to -toe with just about anyone, anyone in the Charlotte area, Raleigh. And the last two years, it has not been the big cities of Greensboro or Charlotte winning championships. Yep. Think Cardinal Gibbons in Raleigh. Think New Bern and the coast. Not the big names winning every year. Well, and that, that's where the coaching comes in. And Daryl Brown and his staff have just as good a coaching staff as really anyone else in the state. And you can put them up against anyone else. They know how to coach these guys. They know how to get them going. And Daryl Brown is coaching up this defense with his team up by 30 points. Well, it never stops. And that's that's really where, where the difference lies in how you coach teams and how you get them to be good to great and then great to being state champs. And putting them in a position where they can win those games and those titles and those situations. It's just that it never stops. But understanding that, hey, these are also guys that are becoming young men in the same regard. And handling that in a way that's still delicate to the situation, but understanding of it. Daryl Brown said he built this schedule to teach his team something every week. Week one, it was Mount Tabor that runs the football. It's physical. Rollsville, explosive offensively. And Reagan, a hard-nosed team. Grimsley has learned a bunch in these first three weeks. They absolutely have. And really, that... That example right there is where these two coaching staffs are also cut from the same mold. Because you can flip it the other way and say the same thing about Reagan. They're just in a different st a different process or a different point in the process with this roster. Here's the sophomore Jalen Moore getting outside. Jalen Moore running away from the defense. 80 yards to the house. Jalen Moore with his second touchdown. It never stops, and that's included on the other side right there. Hey, the Reagan Raiders are not going to stop fighting in this game. No matter what the score is, they need to continue to fight, and you love to see that if you're this coaching staff on the Reagan sideline. These kids have no quit, and they are continuing to push the, push the limit on what they can do. These sophomores are special running the ball tonight. And they are going to be fun to watch here in the next two years together. Now you play the math game if you're Reagan going for two. Got to make up some points quickly. One play, 82 yards. That is an efficient drive if you're Reagan. Absolutely. And now Jacob Smith with options on this two-point play. There's a lot on the shoulders of this sophomore quarterback and wait. Oh. Is that not legal? That's got to be. It's got to be. Oh, they're saying offsides. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'll bail out the defense a bit. Uh, they were about to run the Philly special because that's a legal snap. It is. And then the quarterback was going to sneak out on the right and catch it, right? They were going to do the Philly special. Thank God I have a Philly or an Eagles fan sitting next to me. You do not. You're not a Birds fan? I am not. I am a Steelers fan. Oh, you are a uh, yeah. Philadelphia Phillies fan. Yes. I think. There you go. Good thing we have a dual quarterback, baseball and football, committed <laughs> NC State, Jacob Smith. Try the old Philly special they there. They try it again? Maybe. Oh, my gosh. They try the Philly special again, and Grimsley has none of it. Ja'Kai Eason says, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, you're not going to do it. <laughs> Man, this Grimsley team is mentally tough. I think that one may have been design run, but this certainly was. Jalen Moore off to the races. You see the vision again, taking it, breaks one tackle, and from there it's a foot race. But number two, 
and Teal and Black is going to win nine out of ten times. That's ten touchdowns this year for Jalen Moore. And only three games. What an explosive tailback. I'm telling you, here in the next couple of years, maybe even later on in the season, this year, as long as Jacob Smith continues to develop as well, that's a fearsome tandem in the backfield. And folks remember the accolades here in North Carolina when Will Shipley, the Charlotte area tailback, committed to Clemson, one of the top five players in the country. I'm not saying those two will be that highly regarded, but there's a lot of talk in this triad area about the depth at running back. Well, there's certainly talk about, right? And that's where you got to at least find yourself first, is in the conversation about who are the best players at their positions. And I really think you'd be remiss Right now, if you go through the triad and you don't talk about Mitchell Summers and Jalen Moore. But to that point, you start going statewide and thinking, well. And you talk Alex Sanford over yeah. at Ledford. There's yep. a lot of talent in this area. I mean, how 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 far do you go before it's like, hey, these guys aren't in the conversation anymore? you got to go pretty far. And this is only their sophomore campaigns. Another two seasons under their belt. And we're only at the beginning of this one. At what point do you start saying dynamic isn't good enough of a, of a term for them to be described as? I am beating to the drum of this Reagan marching band, rocking and rolling tonight here in Pop Town. It's a good environment, though, isn't it? Sold out at house as Ryder Lawson boots this away. Oh, we got an onside special. Go 10 yards. Go 10 yards. It goes five. Okay. The effort was there. Yeah. The execution, not so much. Like the idea. Oh, get it, get it exactly where you want it. You got to get it to the 50. Yep. And it just hit the brakes. The idea is, is right there. You want that ball to bounce real high up in the air. It's and Reagan sit get... there as it goes, you guys want to touch this, please? <laughs> Can you touch it? Can we make this a live ball? And now Grimsley goes to its bench. Here's Jacquez Crawford, the backup quarterback, who's also a sophomore. They are both six feet tall and look the part in pregame. So just like Faison Brandon did last year, now gets his burn. Crawford lowers the shoulder on his first carry, and he is not going down. How important are these reps for a sophomore getting his first action in the second half? Well, hey, again, to that point, right? Faison Brandon last year in the same role that we find Jacquez Crawford in right now, learning and continuing to develop, even if it's from the bench, just taking those mental reps while this offense is on the field. Now you get actual game experience, and that goes a long way as you continue to develop these guys going forward. Think of the Trey Lance trade to the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. You get those extra reps, and maybe you earn playing time down the road. Yep. That's where it is. If you got to develop, you can't always do it just standing on the sidelines. It's got to be in a real game situation. Crawford on second down, feeds the beast. That's Mitchell Summers. Summers breaks one, bangs into two more, and Mitchell Summers over 100 yards on the ground. But hey, Jacquez Crawford is right down the field trying to throw blocks for him. Although this will come back with a holding. Really got to respect the hustle. Instead of just handing it off and watching your running back go to work, get down the field, make a play for him. That really goes a long way for you also putting yourself in a good position with the coaching staff. Undersized tailbacks in this state. We saw Tyler Mason last week from Mount Airy. He had 50 career touchdowns. Here's the next lineage of not necessarily the big power five sized running backs, but super efficient. But it's not always about passing the eye test, right? To me, it really comes down to, hey, is this guy a good football player or not? And size, honestly, half the time, and in high school especially, doesn't even come close to mattering. Here's Summers one more time. He turns what should be nothing and gets five yards out of it. I mean, there's just certain things you can't teach with guys. You can say, well, you can teach them how to, how to read things, and you can teach them how to do certain things. But there are just instincts that come into play, especially at the running back position. And Summers just has that feel for how things are going. Just seeing those holes develop, what's closing up, what's not there. Should I bounce it outside, keep it inside? He's got a good understanding for just how to run the football in general. 
And now he has 175 yards rushing. And that shows that's shown itself in full force tonight. Here on third down, quarterback finds it. Crawford lets it fly, incomplete. A rare second half stop for Reagan defensively. And here comes the punt unit for Grimsley. There's the offensive coordinator having a quick chat, Jesse Tripp. That's an important conversation there with a sophomore quarterback. Yeah. And it was nice to also see Jaquez walk over to him and have that conversation instead of waiting for coach to come on over and talk to him. Let's not forget initial. Alex Taylor is the punter as well. Well, that's a pretty good one. Can he cough and corner this? Yeah, man. What can't Alex Taylor do tonight? <laughs> Flipping the field in the 37-yard punt. We'll take the timeout under eight minutes to go here in Pocktown, North Carolina. It is all Grimsley on our Friday Night Rivals Game of the Week. Sounds of the Grimsley band coming across town from Greensboro across I-40. This matchup has taken place the last three years, and both Daryl Brown and Josh McGee have noted the importance of this big-time rivalry. They want to play each other. I mean, it is important within the region, of course. And, and Coach McGee told us again throughout the week that he's wanting to play these teams because he knows if you want to get to their level, you've got to beat them. And it's just a first-hand example of how to get there. You see all the talent that Grimsley has, how they execute, and how they go about their business. Reagan's trying to get there. Smith flings it outside to Moore. That's a sophomore-to-sophomore -sophomore connection. And Moore is not going down easily, diving for the first. Well, that ball is ruled down. What an effort, seven minutes left in a blowout, and Jalen Moore is fighting for his life. But that's indicative of what this team has. And that's really where you want to see this mentality and the maturity of this team as it continues to develop on the field. Just from a mental standpoint, how mature are you? And continuing to fight like this shows an excellent step forward in their maturity. What I thought was a poor spot, but one yard short, second and one. Quarterback keeper. Look at that little release route. Harvin gets out of bounds. Although not, well, there we go. No relation to Percy Harvin, but young Cassidy with his fourth catch. I wouldn't be surprised as, as the weeks kind of go on and Reagan has a bye week next week, so they've got some time to chew on it. But the RPO game has worked really well for them here tonight. Maybe that's something they incorporate a little bit more as the season goes on. Before facing another top 10 team in the state in East Forsyth to open up league play. Be the best, you got to beat the best. There are no breaks in this Reagan schedule. Four top 25 teams in the state in the first four weeks. As Smith keeps it, throws that RPO, incomplete. How does this wrinkle become a more prominent part of the offense? Well, there's different ways to deploy it. So we've seen here tonight where they've done the bubble screen after reading the defense. Of course, you have the ability to hand off and it just be a regular run play, or you can have it pull and then you can have a quarterback runner, he throws it. Uh, but there's different ways to deploy it. You can do it where it's still inside, little hang routes as they call them. A tight end or a wide receiver coming back inside. And Smith looks so comfortable yes. throwing those passes. He does. 
And that's where you need to find a comfort zone for Jacob Smith so he has something to really build off of, a solid foundation. But it's not just him. They're, they've been comfortable as an offense running it tonight. Play clock ticks to four seconds. And he gets it off. Here's the new tailback, Aaron Gutierrez. Nice little run for Gutierrez. He gets nine. And a generous spot gives him the first down. That's a Crescent Ford first down. How about these running backs? We've talked about Summers. We've talked about more. Now Gutierrez stakes his claim on this game with a nice run off the left side. Reagan had to replace the 1,000-yard rusher in Zion Saunders, who's playing at the FCS level. Now it's Gutierrez's turn here on first down. Look at Moore splitting the difference. These are hard-earned yards on the ground tonight for these running backs. He's so explosive, isn't he? This is Darren Sproles-esque. The it runs the it really almost kind of is. I mean, you look up the field and the way he gets through, talking a little bit how Summers has a little more patient running style to him, Moore's explosive. I mean, he finds that hole and he's busting through it in a hurry. The coaching staff said Jalen Moore's learning to be more patient. Tonight, he's being aggressive yeah. and making an impact. 100 yards on the ground. Gutierrez joins him for a couple more, but a flag down. I think that's a, a nice wrinkle, though. You talk about patience and running back, oftentimes it's illegal shift. Oftentimes it's it's a thing where everyone kind of applauds it. He says, hey, he's a really patient runner. He sees holes. But there are times where you've got to be more aggressive. I mean, you can't wait for things to develop, and we've seen that from Jalen Moore tonight. And as a former offensive lineman, you know it's hard to create space against 300-pound defenders. Absolutely. That's part of understanding your opponent, so give Moore credit for that as well. Three sophomore interior O-linemen against three 300-pounders in the middle. You see Moore is actually split out wide now. So it's Gutierrez in the backfield. Oh, look at this. Option offense. Well, that's the wrong option. And bringing him down, Kyrie Milner, the middle linebacker. Really thought that was going to be another RPO, but Jacob Smith was pulled it down and had it in a non-throwable stance there, just trying to tuck it and run. And Grimsley does an excellent job sniffing that out and dropping him for a loss. That's the youngest unit in the defensive unit. It's the linebacking core. But Milner stepped up. Last year's starter, Khalil Stimson, 100 tackles in all conference in the heart of this Grimsley defense. Setting up a second and 18. Smiths lets it fly. Nice catch. Wow. And K.J. Ford gets most of that yardage back. That is a gutsy throw by Jacob Smith. I mean, pressure was being applied in a hurry. See him just step up here, locks down, and despite the pressure, just steps into his throw, makes an accurate throw. That is a great throw by the sophomore quarterback. That's a 14-yard pitch and catch. If you ask Josh McGee, he wants to see more of that from the sophomore quarterback, letting it fly through the air. So on third down, he feeds Moore, who slips. And a fourth down coming up. This is the game here for Reagan. You got to think they're going to put the football in the air here. Josh McGee, who intentionally scheduled his hardest non-conference slate ever, three ranked opponents, and with East Forsyth after the bye, who just won. What a stretch of four games against great 4A opponents. Here's the game, fourth and seven, play action. Smith passed the sticks, first down tap. And that'll extend it, William Tap to the 20. Good read. No, a really great read that time by Jacob Smith at the quarterback spot. Sees the defenders come down and cover Gutierrez in the flat, so he goes up to the next level and finds Tap out there. It's an excellent job of understanding the concept of the play and getting it to the right guy. A timeout Grimsley, and you could tell this Reagan offense is causing some trouble on this drive. Yeah, but this is what you want to see. This is exactly what you want to see out of a young team, that fight that just continues to drive them as the game goes on. It doesn't matter what's going on. And now the coaching really begins for Josh McGee, who was a quarterback himself at Winston-Salem State. And he noted, yes, my quarterback's 16, but I got to remind him in practice every once in a while that myself as the coach can still sling it in seven on seven. <laughs> 
it really does help, you know, when you're talking about quarterbacks. And it, in a sport that is so driven by great quarterback play now, when your head coach understands the position because he played it before, I mean, what that does for a quarterback's development is going to be monumental. So Jacob Smith finds himself in a really good spot from that standpoint. He's got a guy who understands what it takes to play quarterback. Jacob Smith, who's committed to NC State for baseball and just signed an offer, an unofficial offer for football with Coach Dave Dorn. There's a lot of options for Jacob Smith in the next couple of years. I mean, who knows? Just outside the red zone here on first down. Smith's Wolfpack got a big win last night over UConn, over Jim Mora to yep. open the season. Sure did. A little audible with a late play clock at four. Uh-oh. Confusion. Smith heaves a prayer. Tap out of bounds. That play seemed a little too overcalculated. Yeah, obviously some miscommunication in the backfield, and I can't really tell if Jacob Smith was just trying to throw that football away. Just get out of harm's way. That's the case. Smart play. Just get it down the field. Live to play another down. Jacob Smith's dad played at Georgia in the 1990s, and you can tell that comfort level for Smith commanding this offense. Josh McGee gives Smith a ton of freedom to call audibles, make changes. Here he is working with it with the play clock ticking. Just in time on second down. And maybe not. A timeout. Even this drive, though, we've seen development out of him. Out of, out of Jacob Smith, out of this offense as a whole. The game never ends. Not, not until there are zeros on the scoreboard at the end of the fourth quarter. The game does not end. And so this is all learning experience for them as they continue to develop and try to get better. Because next week is league play. And in 4A state football, the highest in North Carolina, you got some important players to help you win these games. So our West Shore home, or sorry, Carolina Classic Fair play of the game, player of the game. I'm going to get this right eventually. <laughs> How about the running ability? 19 carries, 214. Mitchell Summers night on the ground. Yeah, how about it? I mean, again, everything you want to see out of a running back, we've seen it for number 22 in Grimsley, white and gray tonight. Mitchell Summers has been electrifying from the jump, had a 60-yard touchdown run on the first drive of the game, and he has not looked back since then. The last two weeks, nine rushing touchdowns and over 400 yards on the ground in two weeks. Uh, really, what else do you ask for? Can you? And a great head of hair. Yeah. I wish I still had some of that. Good luck, my friend. It's going away. Smith slings it outside, and Tap couldn't catch it. When your off game is 214 yards on the ground, <laughs> that's an incredible month of now September, but early August yeah. for Mitchell Summers. Uh, for, certainly a great first thir three weeks of play for for him, for this Grimsley, this Grimsley offense, this Grimsley team, who have still been far from perfect, but they have found ways to blow games open despite that. It's got to be an encouraging sign. Reagan marching towards the red zone. Smith scrambles. Uh-oh. Yeah, it's a no man's land. A ton of pressure in his face. Just another miscommunication in the backfield. Did a fake to almost nobody at that point. Jalen yeah. Anthony there on the stop. Probably makes it a little bit easier to defend in that way, right? I'm not a mathematician, but an interesting call here. The field goal kicker comes out, Ryder Lawson. You wonder how much of this is getting ready for possible field goals late in the game, too. Yep. yep. Look, everybody needs development, right? It can't just be offensive, defense, special teams. There's the third phase of the game. They've got to be just as good. Lawson from 37, but a flag. What do we got here? This is interesting. 
They picked up the flag. I guess I'm just misunderstanding. Does that mean you redo the down? Okay. So the ref picks up his flag. The kick doesn't count. And we play. You learn something new every Friday night, my friend. I don't know that we learned anything there. That might be the problem. <laughs> Ryder Lawson goes, what did I do wrong? I just kicked it. Hey, Ryder, we're right there with you, buddy. <laughs> and a timeout for Grimsley. Yeah, I think everyone's just trying to figure out what's going on. And now if I'm raking, do I bring the kicker back out and try it again? I might. Unless it's a, an equipment thing again. Kind of like we you're saw You're allowed a tee in high school. That is, you are allowed in high yeah. school to bring the tee out on those kicks. So I don't think that's the issue. Well, the official was saying something to Ryder while he was out there on the field. Here at Reagan High School, who is home to Jim Drake, the inventor of windsurfing, a couple hours here from the coast in, in Pofftown, North Carolina. Beautiful facility here. We've been spoiled by the folks at Reagan and at Grimsley for their help all week. And before the game, we were standing down by the field and. Uh, Dave had, had asked me, he's like, do they have turf? I'm just kind of looking at it at the surface level. I said, nope. So you can obviously tell they take great care of this surface here. Definitely one of the better facilities within the state as well. Two programs that take their football very seriously. Very seriously. Excellent crowd here in Pofftown. Which is, I don't want to say surprising, but for such a young school. I mean, this school's only been open for what, less, less than 20 years. 2006. So they've, they've, they've got a passion for it. This is fourth in the ball game. That's flung, and Tap couldn't hang on. So Grimsley can run out the clock. The Whirlies, who in the last three years are 38 and two. Two trips to a state final, one championship. This is one of the best programs in the state. Uh, they're certainly not bad, right? But there's something to be said for that maintained consistency over the years. It's an excellent ball team. And the development never stops. And you can see it here. Instead of having the same kids in there over and over again, hey, it's a blowout. We're talking about getting guys who don't see the field as often in the game so they can see it. So then when it's their time to play going forward, they're ready to go. This is Micah Williams, the new tailback. And a loose snap. Fumble Ruski. <laughs> Nine men on the tackle for Reagan. There are a lot of new faces out there. Yes, there are. And you're starting to see it here in this fourth quarter. <laughs> Getting a little antsy right there with the snap. Not everyone on the same page. And can't run a play if the snap's not perfect, right? Gabe Atonkin is credited for his first sack as a varsity player. It's interesting. The Reagan JV program, 10-0 last year, their best season ever. And a lot of those sophomores are now playing as juniors or seniors on the varsity team. And they are brimming with talent. This is Williams, and he gets spun down. Henry Moosebrugger on the tackle. One of my favorite names in high school football. Moosebrugger. Not as great as Mooseport, the great city in Alaska. Have you seen that movie, Welcome to Mooseport? No. Uh -huh. It's worth a watch, 1990s movie. Yeah. Robert Williams, one of the greats. Oh. Rest in peace to a legend. No, absolutely. I mean, he makes watching that worth it by himself, right? Taken down in the final two minutes here as Grimsley at 2 0. They'll keep this thing rolling. Back to Williams. You know, Evan, if you really look at this schedule going forward for, for the, what the Whirlies have. The rest of the way out, I mean, it's a it's a schedule that definitely favors them going forward. You have the Guilfords, Southeast, Northwest, West, Southwest, the directional schools. <laughs> I don't know if there's a loss coming up on this Grimsley schedule. It's going to be tough for a, a team that is going to be close to home, obviously playing then in conference play at that point. But for as good as they are, as explosive, as experienced, as deep as they are, 
It's going to be a team that's going to be reckoned with with the best of them throughout the state. Once the playoffs come around, they're going to be a real tough out in that way as well. The last three years, 15 and 1, 11 and 1, 10 and 0 in a state championship. This Grimsley team does not lose football games. No. They do not. But that's the culture that has been brought about by Daryl Brown and his coaching staff. It's not the never say die, it's the never say quit, never lose attitude. But that's what they, they've got there. His kids love him for it. Speaking of never say quit attitude, I'm going to get this right. The West Shore home play of the game. How about the effort? You talk about going up and getting it. Look at this touchdown. If you want to talk about next level awareness on a play and instincts, that's it. Alex Taylor didn't just climb the ladder to go get that football. He was out of position, recognized the corner scales was underneath him, and just goes around and gets him. Now Taylor comes into punt after the West Shore home play of the game. And he shows off the boot. It's about 30 yards on that punt. So if you're Reagan, three top 25 opponents, you head into a bye and then face top 10 in the state East for Seth. What do you learn from a night like this? It's just the next step of your development. And you're seeing these teams firsthand that are going to be contenders once postseason play comes around. Saw Marvin Ridge in the Charlotte area week one with a great quarterback and a great offense. Then you go down back to Charlotte in week two to face a Mooresville team that's known defensively throughout the state as being one of the best. And then tonight you have Grimsley, who arguably is the most well-rounded team in the state. So you've seen all these different facets, and East Forsyth is going to be no different in two weeks. So it really prepares you potentially for the rest of the year because from there, you're not going to see teams that are going to be that good, at least on paper, for the rest of the season. And they play in a tougher conference in the, in the Winston-Salem Greensboro area, but these games here are going to harden this team to a point where they're going to say, hey, we win against the best. We know what we need to do. We can go out there and compete with everyone else. Reagan finished second last year in its division, the 4A Metro standings. Grimsley, of course, laning league champions as well. Now in the final seconds, Jacob Smith lets it fly. Pressure coming. Oh, big sack to end it. Pressure keeps on coming. That is Bakari Colbert. I'm going to try to get another snap off here. Can Reagan get one more crack at the end zone here? Ten seconds left in its home opener. Play action. And that goes incomplete. Now fourth in the ball game right here. I think you might just take one and chuck it into the end zone. See what happens. You might as well. Yep. Unless we're going to see some uh, laterals take place here. Speaking of hook and ladder crazy plays, how about Stanford and Cal joining the ACC? Oh, man. One of the greatest endings in college football history. Yeah. The band's on the field. And now they get to do it potentially on the East Coast. <laughs> as part of the Atlantic Coast Conference. College football is a wild landscape right now. Adding on to the stats, Jalen Moore gets loose. And he actually gets the first down, but that's the game. The Grimsley Whirlies continue to dominate 21 straight road victories for the number two team in the state. And Grimsley takes care of business tonight in Pocktown, North Carolina. It's an all-around dominant performance. A little shaky at the start. That's something they'll look to clean up going forward, but as always, able to settle down, play the game they want to play, and really come out with a hard-fought victory as they cruise to another win, their third in three weeks. If you want to see one of the best teams in North Carolina, this is it. The Grimsley Whirlies, reigning state finalists, and they're off and running. We'll have interviews and trophy presentations when we come back to Winston-Salem.
Dave Gorin back out here in Pofftown Grimsley. Big win over Reagan tonight, 41-15. Joining me is their head coach, Daryl Brown. And Coach Brown, pretty impressive effort tonight. Uh, I'm guessing you liked it. Yeah, I was really proud of our guys. We challenged them. I thought we had a great week of practice. I thought we played really well. Um, we had a couple of lows in the second quarter, but other than that, I thought our guys played really hard. To be able to have the balance you have offensively is a gift. Oh, yeah, I mean, who are you telling? Um, we got two weapons on the outside, Mitchell, you know, in the backfield. And then our slot guys and tight ends play really well. Jeremiah Deese had a big game for us. So I was really proud of all those guys. And sometimes when you have that, the defense gets a little overlooked, but they uh, stuck it in there pretty well tonight. Well, I mean, we count on our defense a lot. I think we're extremely deep on that side of the ball. I thought we played really well on that side of the ball. I mean, we gave up one uh, score in the second quarter, but other than that, I thought we played really solid. And when you win on Friday Night Rivals, you know what happens. You get a trophy. Hang on one sec. Here it comes. Even says it in there. Friday Night Rivals, Grimsley, Reagan, game winner. Congratulations. Here we go, fellas. Yeah! And there we go. Evan, back to you. Thanks, Dave. Thank you to the Grimsley staff as well. Mark, one of the best teams in the state, just keeps rolling. I'm, I'm telling you, they are going to be a force to be reckoned with. They already are a force to be reckoned with. But, man, the way that they can continue to improve, they have only scratched the surface of their potential this season. Let's take a look at our turf and tractor scoring summary. Linder turf and tractor. Early on, close game. Reagan got that touchdown. But the Grimsley touchdown before halftime opened the floodgates in that second half. It was really what sealed the deal, right? We talked about how big that drive to start the second half was for both teams. And the way Grimsley was able to come out there, command the field, and work, work right down it, get a rushing score, one of the three rushing scores for Mitchell, for Mitchell Summers on the night. Uh, you can't really ask for much more out of this team tonight. Just a little more consistency, but they're still finding their way in some areas. Mitchell Summers, 20 carries, 219 yards, three tutties that he put on a show. What a performance tonight in Pofftown, North Carolina. We're going to take a moment, thank all of our sponsors who make this game possible. Capital Metals, you saw the trophies at the end there for providing the plaques. Cook Rentals for the end zone views and a mountain fried chicken for some great meal for the crew. Finally, all of our high schools, their admin, supporting the Carolina Classic Fair Friday Night Rivals broadcast. Good news. Next week, Friday night, 7.30, we head for a big matchup. Eastern Alamance, the Eagles host the Reedsville Rams right here on My 48 Sports. For our director, Drew, for our producer, Lori, for our talented crew, we want to thank you for joining us tonight in Pofftown, North Carolina. More like party town for Mitchell Summers and crew. Three rushing touchdowns. Fantastic night for high school football. Grimsley, one of the best teams in the state, keeps on rolling. For Mark Covert and Dave Gorn, I'm Evan Budgerbridge saying good night from Pop Town. All Grimsley tonight in our Friday Night Rivals game of the week.